ba 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 Went to a dance, oh, Bob ran, saw Bob Rose, and I thought I'd understand a Bob ran, Bob, 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 Bob Rose. You got me thunder, grunt, and green, and thunder, grunt, and green, and Bob ran, Bob, 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 Bob ran. Hey, hey, now. Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, now. What's going on? Hey, now. Hey, now. Have you seen Surf Ninjas? You've seen Surf Ninjas, right? Oh, yeah. Many, many, many moons ago. Definitely due for a revisit on that classic. Going to do a double feature with Three Ninjas, obviously. It's just the rendition in that movie, the Baba Ram. Right, Baba Ram. Whenever exactly. I hear that song, I think of Baba Ram because mm. of for Surf Ninjas. I, whenever I whenever I am around someone who has the name Bob, I just am always compelled to just start to just break out into Bob, 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 Bob Ram. Um, not saying that it's good. I'm just saying I do it. That's fine. It's too complete. I, I mean, I usually get like that. Or what about Bob? What about Bob? Yeah. What about Bob? Bob? I, I mean, I love that movie, but it made my life a living hell in the nineties. Why don't you just start printing merch that literally says, what about Bob? Like, <laughs> what are you, or just, no, it should say, what about Bob Rose? You are literally leaving money on the table. You were no just leaving buying that. <laughs> yes, they are. Who? First of all, I would buy a shirt like that. Okay, I'll I'm make one. I'll make it. It won't be hard. You can buy one. But <laughs> okay. I don't. I think I'll sell one. No, one is about what I, what's <laughs> no. going to happen here. So, no, 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 no. Five no. at most. So, real quick before we continue, I yeah. tallied up just the live, just the live streams for the year 2021 in okay. preparation, and it, the 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 tally is not final. I'll give a final tally tomorrow after tonight today's stream and i'm going to do a stream tomorrow because i streamed every day since sunday and i figure i, I gotta just see it through i'm thinking i'll probably do a stream that goes right into new year's eve I'll i mean that's probably how i'll bring in the uh, uh uh bring in the new year uh after my wife has passed out <laughs> hop online and uh spend my new year's eve on youtube as i've spent so much time on youtube i have been on youtube live streaming for a grand total of 10.3 days this year, about 246 hours. So if you just, everything you stream back to back would be 10.3 yeah. days. That's Something like man. that. Yeah, that's just, but that's just the live streams. That's not, that does not include all of the uploads, which I didn't even bother tallying because it's a different, I just wanted to see how much time I've, I've sat in real time making video content here on YouTube. And it's 10.3 days. Um, yeah, if you add in like all the other things you've done, like streaming, Zoom calls. Oh my God. Ever, you know, like just this other was people's just on podcasts. my channel. Yeah, I was about to say this is yeah. just on my channel. I, I didn't even include the four hours that I did. All the all the episodes of of uh Real 96. What's up, Jody Ramon? Raised it and raising it's Arizona is a great uh great. I movie. believe that's gonna make an appearance on some list. Uh oh. Okay, so let's make so look, this is what we're doing. Yeah. Um, this was this was Bob's idea, and I thought it was a good one because he knows I love Nicolas Cage. Uh, we're doing top 10 Nicolas Cage performances. That is the plan, right? So yeah. not yeah. movies, performances. I yeah, think that yeah. is it's a, my list would change. Yeah, it. it I, I'll it be honest. Change. I was trying to qualify, quantify, qualify what makes like how to deal with it, because, you know, it starts to get very. um it starts to become confusing because it's like, oh, I like this movie because of Nicolas Cage's performance or, oh, this is a good movie that has Nicolas Cage in it. And yeah, like yeah. A, a, a movie might be good despite the fact that Nicolas Cage is in it and vice versa. On a, on a separate note, I, I think it's important because this is a Nicolas Cage featured episode. I just have to say the things, my beliefs about Nicolas Cage. First of all, I take Nicolas Cage incredibly seriously. Despite, you know, I, I, I laugh at Nicolas Cage and I goof about Nicolas Cage, goof on Nicolas Cage. I take Nicolas Cage and his work incredibly seriously. I'm, I'm on a quest to see every single Nicolas Cage film ever made. I'm in no rush. I've seen 56 Nicolas Cage films, uh, some of which uh, tens of tens of times, just many, many, many times, 
he over has 109 10. acting credits on IMDb. So I, I thought it was even more. I thought it was 120. Uh, now it's 109, but okay, he's played himself 184 times. Well, le- that's that's be- yeah. that's from like that's interviews. Just like, stuff. Yeah, interviews. But it's 109 actors. Uh, actors. On on Letterbox, it says, "What does it say on Letterbox?" He has because you can go and check. So he has 119 credits on Letterbox. And it says here that I've watched 47% of all Nicolas Cage films. There's probably documentaries in there. There might be. Um, there, might be. there might be. But I, you know, Nicolas Cage makes a, a, a ton of movies every single year. What's going on, Amy? Um, Nicolas Cage makes a ton of movies. And, you know, uh, they're, he, they're all different styles and varieties. Nicolas Cage, Nicolas Cage's career is weird. And well, before we get there, before we even get there, I I don't believe that there is, I, I don't believe any Nicolas Cage performance is a bad performance. I think Nicolas Cage takes his job so seriously and puts his heart into whatever he is doing. And so <laughs> much like, uh, I, I, much like, I, I just feel like, I feel like um, if it, if Nicolas Cage is coming off as, as bad, then it's not his fault. It's the director's fault who doesn't know how to direct. Nicholas well, that's Cage. a, that's a good thing to ask too. Like, cause he, he is divisive, right? We, yeah. We, but happy Thursday. Uh, we both, um, love him, but there are yeah. a lot of people hate him. A lot of people hate him. Yeah. We're not naming names, but people hate him for um, a slew of reasons too. People yeah. don't like him because they don't think he's a good actor. People don't like him because of the movie roles that he takes. There's like a bunch of reasons. And Nicolas Cage has what said What is when, good acting though? What is good acting? I don't think the average person can actually answer that. I don't think me and you can answer that. No. No, good it's, acting it, does not it's a it's, it's subjective. A, it's totally it's subjective. subjective. It's an ethereal thing that yeah. not the universe can only understand what good acting. Is. Only the universe yeah. can understand what good yeah. acting is. And yeah. you know, the the reality is is that Nicolas Cage has his own acting style that he has like sort of coined uh cultivated himself. He calls it um he calls it nouveau shamanism uh, as well as western kabuki. And Nicolas Cage and and this is this is like uh, you know again as I said I take Nicolas Cage very seriously, I, and I've heard him talk about this in interviews and this is like legit true if you watch his performances he is immensely immensely influenced and inspired not just by the Kabuki style of acting which is very theatrical but also German expressionalism he loves silent acting and he has studied a lot of silent cinema and he has infused. A lot of Nicholas Cage treats his his body like an instrument. It's a performance. So, for instance, in the case of I, I don't want to, I'm, I'm just pulling pulling this one out because it was already mentioned in Raising Arizona. Nicholas Cage is literally trying to channel the the cartoon Woody Woodpecker, mm-hmm. and it goes into his performance as a result. You know, like he he takes everything that he does he takes seriously. So even if he's taking a cash job, what does that? You know, even if he's taking the job because of the money. You're, he's still making choices, and I watch all of that stuff. I watch all the direct TV. If it has Nicolas Cage in it, I will watch it because I'm always going to find something interesting. Even if the character that he's doing is not that great, I will still find something interesting in what he's doing, and I will still find some way to appreciate him because I just I respect him so deeply. Is that did the start of that? come from your like how you first were introduced to him like what what started your nicholas mm. cage i like i didn't know you when i first saw you made something that had nicholas cage it was about nicholas cage right i forget what i possibly the, the on this channel that, for sure this channel or maybe a film contest or something there was like a nick cage short or something i don't know we didn't mm. know each other when i saw it yeah nouveau shamanic right yeah, yeah. nouveau shamanic that's that's the yeah. term thank you amy I don't know, but I met you as a Nick Cage fan. Right. Yeah. I like you were defined as that when I first met you. Oh, okay. That makes sense. That yeah. makes sense. People define me by by my love for Nick Cage. And I don't mind. I'm I'm like totally That's fine. I, I but here's the thing, you know, and then there was like a cage assance that we've we've still kind of been in a little bit, but there was like in about I want to say in 2017, almost five years ago now, people just got like super enamored with the 
it was almost like a resurgence of what had happened in 20, 2006. People became a, enamored with Nicolas Cage because of his rage cage. And for those of you who are not familiar with the rage cages, it's when Nicolas Cage goes full cage and he just, he freaks out and he like gets so lost in, in, in the role, in the scene that he just sort of, it's almost like an out of body experience that he's having when he's in like the madness of uh, like it's madness or passion or whatever he's feeling in the character and he's, he's also what i like is that he's aware of it he actually yeah, knows totally. the term rage cage and yep. he's actually discussed how it's affect the marketing of his movies right right and you know yeah. for me it's kind of like uh i i you know i it, it kind of bothers me because mm -hmm. yes Same. i'm I, Same. I like mandy everybody likes mandy uh, we all like mandy we all like i mandy was about to say the mandy problem with, with that was the mandy was problem that's yeah yeah. Right. It was just all about yeah the rage cage. And I would be lying if I said I wasn't stoked on the rage cage when it was coming out. I, that's all I was talking about. But mm -hmm. my I when you to to re, to 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 go back to your question, when did I fall in love with Nicolas Cage? It's one of the movies that's on my list. And I'll I'll talk about it when we get to that. Um save it for the list then. All right, I'll save it for the list. Save it for the list. And you know, I've I grew up on Nicolas Cage. I he's always been in my life. I just started to gravitate towards him as I got older and slowly started to realize I was just like holy crap. There's like there's so there's so much amazing there's so much amazing stuff to love about Nick Cage. Number 1, he is not he is not what he's not Hollywood handsome. He's not what you would consider to be a Hollywood handsome actor. He's not like yeah, a Tom he, Cruise. He lives in that other realm of like the Willem Dafoe's and Steve Buscemi's. He's not exactly as weird looking as them, but he's not. Yeah, he's not. No, he's, he's he not is like a, a Leonardo DiCaprio or something. He like is. That. He yeah. is a bit, especially if you look at him in the 80s, he's awkward. He's a little yeah. gangly and awkward. And and you know what he is? He is the face of the everyman. But he's the every man as a leading actor in Hollywood. He is our spiritual. He's our spirit animal. He's leading the way. And so when I look at him in all that he does and that and the thing about Cage is he runs the gambit. He was an action star. He does drama. He does horror films. Does comedy. He does comedy. I mean, he does. He, he does weird surrealism. He does cult films like he does. Absolutely. There, there is not a place that Nicolas Cage can't be found. And, you know, for those of you out there, Has he again, done a musical? Has he sung? I'm not sure if he's done a musical. I think yet. He's done that, yeah. But, you know, a lot of people are are just like, you know, they, they, they sort of laud Cage for taking money, for taking these these crappy movies and for the money or whatever. But th this is the truth. I, I believe apart from three franchise films. He has never repeated a character once. Think about that. Yeah, you're right. He did the Crudes 2. National Treasure 2. He did National Treasure 2. And he did, uh, what was, and Ghost Rider 2. Mm -hmm. And I believe, and don't quote me on this, I could be wrong, but I'm almost positive. Apart from those three sequels, Nicolas Cage has never repeated a role. I'm looking at the IMDb right now. Please, please follow up on that. I, I'm, I'm pretty I'm... sure you're right, though. Unless unless he re reprises Spider-Man Noir in Across the Spider-Verse. Right. That would be the next it's time. It's only it. three. It's only three. I mean, he's yeah. in movies like he goes from being an Oscar winning actor to like voicing, you know, a, a cartoon Pixar movie to, you know, just like everything, every single type of movie you can imagine. So he is... In my opinion, he is one of our great actors and he's like the modern day. He's like a Humphrey Bogart meets. Um, I don't know. I can't finish that. I can't finish that analogy, but he he is. He is truly a, an incredible, incredible talent. And I'm grateful that we have as many Nicolas Cage films as we have. And, and just one last thing. Just when you, th oh, you know, what? we'll save it. We'll save it for the thing. Let's launch into it. Let's launch into the meat. <laughs> I'm just letting you go, man, because I know how much you love Nick Cage. I don't know. No, if I go can, ahead. I can't say some I can't, things about Cage. I, no, no. I love Nick Cage. I grew up with Nick Cage. You got to understand, too. I didn't, when I was a kid watching um, Raising Arizona on Comedy Central, I didn't know. To me, that movie was weird when I was a kid, but I watched right. it a thousand times. I didn't know who Nick Cage was. I didn't know who the Coen brothers were. 
I just watched that movie a thousand times and I was like, there's that guy, you know, and somebody becomes that guy. And then what was the, it was, uh, they also played, uh, the honeymoon, uh, honeymoon in Vegas. I, I oh, saw, yeah, great I came to know Nick Cage originally, initially through his like romantic comedies and it his could comedies. happen to you. Yeah. It could to happen to you. Angels? Dude. I, do you know how many times I watched? I have seen it could happen to you like like fifty times. It's just, great. Well, just because it, it was on cable it was a cable staple of my childhood. Yeah. Not that 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 subject matter even appealed to me. <laughs> but right, but you just watched I it. I watched you know? it. Yeah, it was on all the time. So I yeah. I knew him as that, and only only when the switch came where he started doing action movies, I was like, why is the funny guy from the movie about the baby doing this? You know, holy trinity of action films of the nineties. Holy, but let, uh, uh, let's yeah. let's talk, let's save the actual. Yeah, say, film talk I feel like the, yeah, if we start naming movies, we're ruining the list. Yeah, I don't want to don't want to ruin the list. Oh, by the should way, we, should we? I was gonna say, should we go like you say your ten, you, I'll say my ten, and then we keep going. Mm, I was thinking what we'll do is we would reveal them one at a time, and if we have a, a matchup, then we each take a turn talking about it. Okay, and here's how it's gonna work: we each get to say something. And then we get a rebuttal for the other person. Like if we want to comment on what someone said and then we move on or else we'll be here till 12 o'clock at midnight. Okay. Okay. Yeah, I don't, I don't want to. Yeah. Let's... <laughs> well, I'm saying is do we, but we, do we both like say our number 10 at the same time? I, mine are not ranked because. Oh, mine are ranked. I ranked. I could mine. not. I could not rank mine. Mine are all out of order. There's no particular order oh, to mine. Okay. And I to, I'm going to keep my ranking. I rank them. I'm going to keep. Yeah, the you should. Why yeah. don't we go by Bob's ranking yeah. and I'll just throw mine out. And if we have one that lines up, then that's the one that I will match Bob with. And okay. the last thing I want to say, the in terms of in terms of the when people start the first time that cage started to get like this sort of modern renaissance cult following was with the Wicker Man remake. Mm -hmm. It was initially panned when it came out. And through how to YouTube get burned, how to get burned. Yeah, through YouTube compilations, people started to see the hilarity of 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 Nicolas Cage's performance. But here's the thing about Cage's performance: he is taking this movie super serious. duper seriously. He is not effing around. And you know what? He's not doing it because he it's not an ego thing. It's because he loves the, the craft of acting and he puts one hundred and fifty percent into everything he does. You, you know, I am an enormous fan of the original Wicker Man. Like, I love it. Yeah, I love both of them. I love both of them. But when the when the remake came out, I, I thought it was a good test of who I was as like a film guy. <laughs> you know what I mean? Because when they yeah. remake a movie you love, you're supposed to be like me. <laughs> you're supposed right. to hate it. But right. I was like, no, this is kind of hilarious and awesome. Like, I mean, Neil Abute, he's hit or miss, but Nick Cage brings that movie together, you know, like completely. And I listen, you know, what's interesting, too, is it's like th there's a lot of I mean, th the violence is so the violence in the Wicker Man remake. Wait, is, is it on your list? Because we shouldn't talk about it. We should no, talk it's about not on. It's, is okay. it on your list? I'm no. sorry. Is it on no. Your list? No, no, it's not on my list. So we can talk no. about it real quick. Yeah. The the violence is so like it's so serious. The violence like it's not. But it makes it funnier. But that's what makes it funnier. It, yeah. It's the same tone as what makes Reanimator funny or Return of the Living Dead. Like when he drop seeing... kicks Lily Soliep <laughs> Sobieski into that wall. Right. And <laughs> normally you would be like, oh my God, like this is terrible, like terrible, like misogynistic, like abuse or whatever. But like the, the, the it's the whole, it's like so surreal. But circumstantially, it's not. You know what I mean? Like, no, they, no, it's, it's he has no power in that movie. No, he has no power. And yeah. not only that, he is the it's just such a it, it's such like a fish out of water thing to see. Like you're watching this thing and you like can't believe that it's happening. You're like, holy crap. He just drop kicked that girl into a wall. Like it's just I'm it's, laughing only because of the movie, not because it's funny to. You know what it is? Yeah. It, it operates on the same sort of level as in Tropic Thunder. When I think it's Ben Stiller throws the little kid, the little baby kid. <laughs> oh, yeah. And the kid the goes fl <laughs> flying and you just, you know what it does? Like, like comedy in its purest form. And we'll, I swear we'll launch into this after this comedy in its purest form elicits a visceral reaction that we cannot control. If we see something funny, even if we're, we, we're not supposed to laugh at it, 
we're still going to laugh because it's a funny it's thing. all it's well it's an yeah it's like a it's like a fight or, fight or flight almost right uh like and also with that movie specifically wicker uh wicker man there's a ramp up like yeah he drop kicks lou sobieski but then he puts on a bear suit <laughs> Right, that's he what I mean. Punches someone in the <laughs> face. Yeah, it's like, yeah, I mean, like, you just think that's a bicycle in a bear then. suit. He's riding a bicycle <laughs> in a bear suit, like trying to solve a mystery on an island. Yeah, and then he gets, and then he gets a face full of CGI bees, and <laughs> and it's like you could tell it's like cages against the wall. It's like I gotta somehow pretend that there are bees here. How am I gonna do this? Because there's no bees. So yeah. he just goes, "No, not the bees." Not the bees. <laughs> But so he, good. he is he is playing it so serious. He's like, okay, there's bees. I have to imagine there's bees. I'm going for it. And there's and, and no if you wing. if you if you have a comedy too, you'd want him to play it serious, right? Like uh -huh. that's how that's that's good comedy, in my opinion, is that you yeah. play it serious. But then you know, sometimes in a drama, you want to play it for laughs, but yeah, it's you know enacted seriously. So, you know, it's always the opposite. All right, let's launch in. You you're leading the way with your list, and then I will trade off for everyone. And like I said, if we have the same performance on our list, okay. So I will, if I say yeah. something that is also on your list, then we yes. me, we've met. Now, okay. mind you, if I have not seen the film, I will let you know because I don't want to be spoiled on any Nicolas Cage films, even if the old ones. Okay, I, I really I thought I figured you saw all of them, Jeff. No, I like okay. I said, I've only seen 50, 47 percent. Okay. 57 Nicolas Cage films, and I am in no rush. Well, I spent some time. I took about an hour out of my day to do this, to rank them. I appreciate so, it. And, I, and then the ranking has some pretty controversial, uh, you know. That makes me happy. Slots in there. Like some yeah, people be that. like, really? Okay. Yeah. But uh, some, some of it's pretty obvious. So for me, this is 10, top 10, as in 10 favorite Nicolas Cage performances for me and for for Bob, it's actually his top 10 Nicolas Cage performances. And so that's how we have to look at our two lists yes. as we combined. Okay, go, go, yeah. go, go, go okay. into it. So number 10, I thought about, there's a lot. Of, I did a list of honorable mentions too, but this just edged in because it's the only time I think that I really feel like he's doing a pop impression. Number 10 for me is Kick-Ass. Kick-Ass is on my list too. Yeah. Uh, it's because he's literally doing, you know, Adam West Batman. Yes. In a hyper violent movie. Yes. But his performance, I remember uh, going to Ugh. see the kick ass press screening filled to the brim with people, and nobody was ready for him to come out like that. Like, no, like people knew he was in the movie, but the trailers did a good job of holding back his performance. And, and when, when he came on and he started doing the, you know, the broken speaking. You know, like the broken, enthusiastic speaking, like Adam West. I, I just remember the crowd literally responding in tune. It was amazing. So that's why it actually had to make my top 10, because not only do I love it, I've watched that movie several times, but the actual experience was like palpable in the theater for me. Like, uh, like it actually elicited the big one of the biggest Nick Cage's responses I've ever seen. So, um. Uh, yeah, I also have this on my list. I am I, I love I love those kick ass movies in general, and I'm so sad they didn't make that third one. Nicolas Cage is one of the best parts about the the first kick ass movie because yeah, it's it's everything that, that you said. It's Nicolas Cage going, okay, I'm gonna get I can get to play this 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 um vigilante superhero that is whose the costume is modeled after the dark night. I mean, he's supposed to be look like Batman and he follows it up. And you'd almost imagine that his character is super stoked on Batman. Anyway, big daddy is yeah, yeah. stoked on Batman and that he almost, he almost on purpose, big daddy in character, in character world is almost choosing that as his big daddy voice, the way, you know how Batman has to have his Batman voice and that the character of big daddy, like, that, it, that's what Nick cage instead of choosing Christian Bale, he chose, Right. Adam West because right. and you also get the like the thought I know I've read the comic and stuff but in the movie you get the thought that he came up with this whole lifestyle and this whole idea as a as a, a trauma response in his life right. because you know because of his fandom as a kid of Adam West 
Right. Like, oh, I'll become a superhero and I'll even talk like him. Like it reads like that, but they never say it, which makes it even better. You know, and it, it just it's it's you know, he doesn't have a large, large role in the film. Mm-hmm. It's just like a supporting role. But it just oh, my God, it's an important it's, role. You know what? This is one of the best uses of Cage. He can be a leading man, but your film, if if you don't have a, a role for Nicolas Cage as the lead, you put Nicolas Cage in a role like this and your film is just like. It's that kosher stalled on top of the steak. You know what I mean? It just, oh, just adds so much. Well, the best actors are usually the best character actors, too. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Agreed. Agreed. Yeah. All right. Moving on. What's your, okay. what's your number, number nine? Number nine, um, I think it's actually mentioned in one of the comments you put on screen. Uh, this is a great, I love this movie. It is not one that I think has a very big following by Sir Ridley Scott, Matchstick Men. I also have Matchstick Men on okay. my list as All well. Right, and I'll let you two, lead. Man. You lead. Well, yeah, I mean, lead. I mean, Matchstick Men is a, a rather subdued performance. It doesn't. It's not a Rage Cage performance. It's not. It's internal. It's not, yeah, it's internal. It's not anything like Kick Asses. Um, it's just. It's a solid movie, but it's also showing uh, the inner workings of his mind more. Yep. He's the OCD thing. I think so he's, good. He's really good at emoting with his body what he's actually thinking, and I think like. You know, him sitting there almost vibrating while eating tuna fish out of cans and trying to figure out, you know, what's what the actual problem is. It were it just it's an amazing performance. It, it's like the people who doubt Nick Cage, who say he's a bad actor, Con Air sucks or whatever. You know what I mean? You show him matchstick men. Yeah, totally. You know? And yeah, it's just, it's just everything you say. There's nothing more to say. He He's just it's him. You half of the acting he's doing, like half of his emo- emoting is coming from his eyes mm-hmm. and the way that he is like, he's just, and I, I watched it for the first time ever. I think this year was my first time really? seeing it. Yeah. Okay. I saw, I had the privilege list. of seeing it in theaters. I, I, it's awesome. Yeah. It, it's, it's really great. And the relationship with the girl, with his, you know, daughter, supposed daughters is, is just, uh, it, it's very tender because he's, a, he's like, rep, he's kind of reptilian a bit you know he's like a bit of a rep he's sort of reptilian in his approach to life like he just eats because he needs to eat like he's made and it's like he's he's conning people out of money but like what's it all for really right what's he doing also like that cast is just incredible it's an yeah. ensemble almost sam rockwell's in it yeah and just great that. yeah it's just it's just a great cast it's a great movie it's when you say ridley scott you don't people don't mention matchstick men Actually, I would put Matchstick Men would be a great pairing with Nightmare Alley. That is a good okay. double feature. I should tell Nathan that we were talking about Nightmare Alley last night. So I need to see Nightmare Alley, but I will you take your word for it. You absolutely have to see I'm Nightmare see Alley. Any Guillermo del Toro movies? So don't. Yeah, I mean, I will see. I mean, it's just a matter of time. You know. Actually, I wish Nicolas Cage was in it too because it, it didn't need Nicolas Cage, but it would be great to have Nicolas Cage in that movie. He would. Hey, man. He might be a, a GDT movie at some point. Um, okay, what's your next one? Okay, next one, obvious. It had to be on the list. Uh, number eight, I think it's kind of, I think most people put it way higher, but I'm putting it number eight, Mandy. Um, okay. It's not on your list. Okay. I purposely did not put Mandy on my list because I, while I think that it's got some great Nicolas Cage acting in it, like mm-hmm. superb, because the thing about Mandy is, I'll let you go. I'll let you explain why Mandy's on your list. I just interject that. First of all, a lot of people think that there's no story in Mandy, like that Mandy has absolutely no story or plot or character development at all. No, it and does. it's loaded to the gills with character yeah. stuff. You just have to look for it. It's it's in there in such subtle ways. There's so many little nods to uh, the backstory of everything that happens in Mandy. So that is also a lot of people just wanted to be contrarians when that came out because everyone was so excited right there's a lot of contrarians yeah he goes full rage cage i would say the better acting is when he's sad like his sad eyes when he's crying so what i was gonna say uh like it's not just rage cage that's what annoys me about the whole marketing thing or the internet buzz because like half the movie is literally subdued sadness. Yeah, he's and so also quiet. Confusion. He's very quiet in the movie. He's very good at being confused. Yeah, like 
and I and it, like there's a lot of moments in Manny where he's literally just trying to look into the void of un, of the unbeknown, you know, and just like when they're eating the TV it. dinners and watching <laughs> Night Beast, and his right. eyes, he's like this when he's like right, looking right. at the... exactly. <laughs> it's not all Rage Cage. It's right. not just uh, it's not just the um, chainsaw fight. It's not just right. that. So I think there is some there is a very dynamic nature to that movie. Mm-hmm. I you know it made the list. I was a little bit hesitant because it's such an obvious choice, but I, I love it. I, I love I Mandy. It. Had to had to leave it. off it. Had to leave it off the list because I just want I. There's so much more to Nick Cage than just these performances, and I don't want like I just didn't want to go there because mm-hmm. I just thought I don't know. I just didn't think like is it his is it for me? Would it be in in my top ten like of all time? I don't. I just don't think so. Would like it, it's very it, good, but would it make your top ten um, Nick Cage movie list, not performance list, movie list? I think it might. Maybe might. Okay. It For might, me, it would probably not, it would be an on, it, it might be an honorable mention if it didn't make the top ten. But, gotcha. But yeah, okay. it's hey, I I love Mandy. Great choice. Yeah, yeah, I Great love choice. Mandy too. Um, um, I'm going to I'm going to do one of mine, and okay. mine. Do I this tell you? Movie? Wait, do, do I tell you where it is on my list? What for Mandy? No, when you tell me one of yours, do I tell you on my list where what number it is? Oh, if you if you have yes yes because okay. if it, if okay. it's the same one, then you just say oh well, that was my number four pick, and okay. then you'll talk because I, like, I feel like I got to defend some of these rankings too. Oh so, no, you don't have know. to. You no no, I, I want to. I want to. I okay, wanna, I have reasons for everything. You can. Go ahead. Go ahead. Um, Doctor Derpy says National Treasure for him. That's cool, man. That's cool. National Treasure is a fun movie. No one's yeah, arguing that. Fun. Um, yeah, that's funny. We had two. We were two for two. Um, we're, yeah, we were two for two. Look at that. Okay, ready. Mine is. I'm I'm picking Bad Lieutenant, Port Authority of New Orleans. Port is that call. on your list? Port of Call. Yeah, sorry, that's what yeah. I meant to say. That is not on my list, but I do okay. love it. And Werner Herzog, obviously amazing. Right. Um, I yeah, so that's not on my list. It, if go. I was making yeah. a top ten, like if I like sat down and spent the time to make the top ten, hands down, I I think Bad Lieutenant would be in the top five easily. And this was the movie. I it was somewhere around two thousand nine when I was watching it for the first time. And this is the movie where I start to really like in a modern sense, because like I said, Nicolas Cage household name mm-hmm. that I grew up with from uh, as a child of the 90s, just a beloved, beloved actor who I always watch his films. But when I really started to begin my fascination with Cage started with Bad Lieutenant because the choices, the performance, it, first of all, the performance is a magnum performance. Incredible. I talked about it on here. It's just, it's it's astounding the all of the different things that he's doing and it's having. His best, it's his best cocaine performance. He's he's bombastic in this film, yeah, yeah. and he is, you know, Werner Herzog is like the Werner Her, the the mixture of Werner Herzog and Nicolas Cage is just like it it, it fizzles the mind. And what makes it what so here's a couple of things that he's doing also, that, are, that are really a little great. Val Kilmer in there too. Right, right. Yeah. The um first of all, his, his hairstyle is crazy in this film. <laughs> Nicholas Cage, I I I have a theory, and it doesn't matter to me. I don't give, I don't care. I, I I'm pretty sure Nicholas Cage is is nigh bald at this point, and that he, he just everything, everything he does is a toupee, like John Travolta. John Travolta has a a I don't know if you know this, John Travolta has a walk-in refrigerated room in his house like a vault full of his wigs from all of his movies that's amazing though, that is right? not a joke that is he is no, bald I believe as it. an eagle he's bald as an eagle and by the way he wears bald well but he puts on all all of the rugs that he's ever worn in all What's of his performances. taking of pelem one two three was that yeah, when I think he was he's bald. bald. He might yeah. have been bald. I know he was bald in uh, with the movie with um, Robert De Niro, where they're yeah, in the yeah. mountains. I forget the name of that one. Um, but Nicolas Cage wears some sort of stuff on his head. It's not. I his mean, real isn't hair. that isn't that what also made like Ghost Rider ninety times funnier? Is his hair in that movie? <laughs> well, sometimes his what his hair choice. It, sometimes his hair choice, and recently in the last like three to five years. You know, he loves dyeing his beard jet black and it just looks so it's so obviously jet black and it's just not, you know, he has like this white beard that he's dying black. And it doesn't 
detract them. <laughs> like in other actors no, doing that, definitely it would do- not. He is like one of the few act, not the piece. <laughs> He's one of the few act- actors where they could do that. Their hair looks ridiculous, and he he looks like he has dyed facial hair, and it doesn't take me out of the movie whatsoever. No, and I only no. bring this up. I'm not bringing this up because like to make fun or to say that there's something wrong with that. All I am saying is that the the hair, his hairstyle in this movie adds to the psychosis, the psychotic nature of his character Mm -hmm. who is yeah he's this drugged out like like cocaine cop who basically like lives by you know i mean it's it's an extension of harvey keitel in the original black bad lieutenant and it is a remake a lot of people don't know that is it a remake i always thought it was just sort of like a spiritual like i know that abel ferreira like was angry about it happening and that's Hmm. And so, and I also know that Werner Herzog hates the title of the movie <laughs> because yeah, he's but, just like I had to live with how bad the title is. I mean, I, yeah. I would just I just think of it as Bad Lieutenant. Generally, I just think of it as Bad Lieutenant yeah, as well. That and, title is a nightmare. <laughs> yeah, it's it's. I think it's as mighty as the original. Actually, I don't think the original is that great. To be honest with you, it's okay. Oh, I, I love mean, the original. I, I'm a big. You know, fan. it's not. It's yeah. it's. I like Gable Ferrer. He's great, but um. The, but this film, Nick, what Nicolas Cage is doing, first of all, about halfway through the film, he just decides that he's going to start talking with a different accent. And I don't know why. <laughs> it, it, and he's doing almost kind of like a Humphrey Bogart accent. He just starts doing Humphrey Bogart. And it just all I can all I can, you know, sort of sort of like, you know, assume is that it's just him. Like he's just, for whatever reason, he's made this choice that that's the way the character should be. Like, as the character is slowly cracking. There are, there's a scene, you know, he starts to uh, feel pain. His character starts to feel pain in the scene. And he says it's because of his back. And then I'm noticing that Nicholas Cage is actually sort of slumping one shoulder down and keeping yeah. one shoulder up as he's walking. And he's doing this to keep up with the narrative of about his back. And I just body's an instrument, man. Right. I'm I'm just in awe of his of his acting. And the other, there's a scene where one of the best scenes of the movie. There are two scenes that really stand out more than any other for me personally. The first one is with exhibit. And they're smoking crack. <laughs> and Nicolas Cage is just, he's worked himself up into a frenzy. And you might go, oh, he's being too over the top. He's being too cartoonish. And then, you know, again, it's just him getting lost in this drugged out role as he's trying to basically, um, he's trying to get all the leverage over this drug dealer. He's trying to get this drug dealer to do what he wants. And he's just sort of like, it's like he's over amping, he's over amping himself to sort of like, uh, it's almost like he's, it's almost like as if exhibits like Elmer Fudd and he's Bugs Bunny trying to just sort of like, like run circles around That's exhibit really and exhibit. Yeah. Right. And exhibit yeah, yeah. doesn't like know how to exhibits character, like doesn't know, like he's supposed to like blow this guy away. He's got a double barrel shock under the thing and he just can't make sense of Nicholas. K- uh, of, of he's Nicholas so off putting in that scene. Yeah. He's just so, he's just so bananas. And then the yeah. other scene that's really great is, a scene where he basically is putting the strong arm on an old woman in a wheelchair and he pushes out a door. He, he's hiding behind a door and he's shaving the five o'clock shadow off his face <laughs> with an electric razor and he puts it in his pocket and he walks up to this woman as he's like pressuring her to like get some information out of her and he takes her oxygen hose and just cr- <laughs> And just crimps it. And you just you just see Nicolas Cage like um just trying to sh- like he's he's just oozing desperation as this character who slowly feel because what it is is this cop who thinks he's in control and uses his you know authority as a cop to sort of basically be the king of the underworld and do whatever he wants, and the, his walls are slowly closing in on him, right. And, you know, he's in debt and he's got a drug problem and everything is is sort of like mounting. And it's just it's a it's it, it's actually kind of a beautiful film because of like what happens at the end. And uh, I think the end scene is just so it's it's whimsical and playful and sort of like a, a beautiful uh, send off as, you know, um, I don't know. It's, it's just it's just I, a really, really great film. 
I you've inspired me to revisit it because I'll be honest, I haven't seen it since it was released. Oh, you oh um, so I, I just you're gonna not, revel in it. Not you're because I didn't like it. It's yeah. just you know, I mean time passes and sometimes you don't you don't you forget to revisit. You you're but, you're in for you are in for such a treat. Such a treat. Yeah, yeah. No, I mean, I remember the movie. I think I was actually working at a video store. I was managing a video store when it came out. That, just so, him and let me tell was, you. Yeah. Let me tell you. The customers loved it. Yeah. That was a, that was a, one of those ones where, like, whenever I recommended it, people were like, "Come back and like." Shake I, my I hand. love that movie so much. So that's yeah. that's on. That's and you can tell. You can list. tell it was your it was your turning point too. I like that. Yeah, that was my yeah. that was that my was turning point. point. That was the movie I said, "Wow, there's something to Nicolas Cage that I'm just there, like." It was right around that time, and then like. You know, season of the witch came out, and like, oh, don't start listing movies. Oh, then, sorry, yeah, 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 let's not do that. Okay, I was gonna going. say it's synergy though, because you saying that, and that's your turning point. I honestly do feel like what I'm about to say is a turning point movie for me on Nicolas Cage. Okay, let's and hear it. This is my number six. We're still in the top half. Yeah. Uh, this. Why is... are you going to number six? If uh, oh no, sorry, number. Oh wait, I skipped one. You, didn't I? you should be no, at uh, number we're number seven. seven. We're number seven. Sorry. Yeah. This is. Number seven, uh, this is a movie that I actually don't know how people actually feel about this movie, but I love it. It is atypical for Nick Cage. Yeah. I'm looking at the thing. Um, it's eight millimeter. I it I, I threw it on the list because it is uh I think it's a phenomenal rare film. It's a phenomenal movie. It's a ra- it's it's a rare performance by him that I think kind of doesn't fit with the rest of the canon, you know? And uh but I mean, there's moments where there's a little bit of cage in there, like when he's crying with the mothers, like, what do you want me to do? You know, he's like, you know, right, there, there's yeah. moments like that. But this I feel like this movie, especially the ending, he he plays vengeance better than he ever has. Yeah, it's a masterpiece right. of okay. a film. It's, it's absolutely great. a masterpiece of a film. I didn't know you liked eight, eight millimeter this much. Jeff. that's great. Um, I uh, you know, they made all, a sequel. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I do, and I have never seen it, but I love this film. Uh, yeah. Joaquin Phoenix is great in He's it great. as yeah. well, and it really sort of like t- it's like the Hollywood. It's also like, James Gandolfini, and, right? Uh, right, and, James uh, Gandolfini's yeah. in it. Yeah, and this is like basically Hollywood's version of taking us into the the Internet iceberg of late. You know, like how there's yeah, like yeah, the Internet yeah. iceberg. This is the Hollywood '90s version of the Internet iceberg, and. I, I do love I do love eight millimeter very much. I for me personally, I that that performance is not I, when I think of great Nicholas Cage performance, I think that he makes that film great, but there's nothing like he just he's like a it's, it's, it's a so, noir. It's, it's like a neo noir where he's like a detective hero. You so know? one of my goals with my list, I was putting maybe way too much thought here, and now you're starting to tell. Uh yeah. had two buttons, uninspired and full in psycho cage. Yeah, I agree. Um but the reason I was trying to make my list dynamic and trying to like make everyone kind of have a little bit of a different reason why I love it, you know? Uh, yeah. And so this one for me was like, this is a meat and potatoes performance proving that yes. he can do this. Right. It also has, it has his spice in it. I also like the fact that I think it, like I said, I think he shows anger in this movie better than he does in almost any movie. Like it's true anger, like searing vengeance. You know what I mean? The even be- so even better than, even better than ghost rider, which is about vengeance. <laughs> <laughs> What about your and drive angry? <laughs> I love drive angry. I drive, love angry drive angry is is secretly ghost uh ghost rider part three. Yeah, really seriously. Uh, so yeah, that's why it makes my list. I realize it might not stand out for a lot of people. No, I I'm, respect that. Yeah. I totally respect it. It's not on my list, but I absolutely respect it. And yeah. actually, something that I need to revisit for sure. And it's so it's so rewatchable if you're in that mood. You know what I mean? Yes, yes, yeah. and yes. There is Danzig stickers in the. Uh, yeah. In the uh, what you call it, it's uh, all all misfit Sam Hain dancing nerds. We love to call out when we see. You got to understand something, Bob. In 1987, um, one of the most popular television sitcoms, like syndicated b- before the like entire world in the 80s when there was no internet, Saved by the Bell, the episode where Jesse is on pet pills and she goes, "I'm so the most excited. famous I'm episode, so right?" Yeah. And do you know what's behind her? is a poster of the misfits hanging on her bedroom wall. That's incredible. But you have to imagine that the set deck is a misfits fan and that he is just 
he is absolutely putting that on the wall so that it's on national television for every fiend out there when this is so <laughs> underground. Like, could you, uh, you're, my that's mind, would yeah, yeah. It's, it's an incredible thing it's when incredible. you think about it. Um, but that's why, yeah, we all just like pointing out anytime it's in the show. Oh, Danzig sticker. Oh, Misfit Skull. You know, that's incredible. So. Uh, I wanted to say one last thing about eight millimeter because yes. I'm on your show. Uh, I feel like one of the first movies me and you bonded over was Batman forever. Right. Yes. Uh, and that's a Joel Schumacher film. Yes. And, you know, I, I honestly think eight millimeter is, is one of his best movies. Did he do eight millimeter? I did not realize Yeah, he's that. a direct. He directed it. Yeah. Bro. Joel Schumacher is like, he, like he's great, he's man. A body of fucking work, dude. Like, I, I hate that people uh, are upset with Joel Schumacher over Batman because just like, look at the body of work. I didn't even realize yeah. that he did eight millimeter. I mean, it's just like, what a genius. He's a genius. Well, too. It's it's a, it, yeah, it's a great movie that deserves to be revisited by many people, but I don't honestly know what the cultural reaction to it. Also, is Ava was. Mendes is in Ghost Rider and she was also in um, uh, Bad Lieutenant. I didn't realize that she was, I forgot that she was in Ghost Rider. Yeah, yeah. She's uh she's a Nicolas Cage. She just needs that third one to make the trilogy, you know? Yeah. Well, there is the man trilogy, Matchstick Men, Family Man, and Weatherman. And I've seen right. all three. Yeah. <laughs> I love Weatherman. It's not on my yeah. list, but Weatherman, we'll Weatherman is good. Things. And so is the yeah. Family Man is good. Family but, Man's great, yeah. Uh that uh, was on my list and I took it off. The Family Man was on my list. You know, the, the Family Man is the opposite. When I was a kid, when the Family Man came out, I was such a nerd for watching comedy movies. <laughs> Um, I was like, this is the opposite scenario of Mr. Destiny with Jim Belushi. <laughs> you seen Mr. Destiny with Jim Belushi. It's the literal opposite scenario. To wow. The now I have to go and check that out. And it's see. a perfect double feature. It's a yin and a yang. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah. That's cool. <laughs> um, okay. You did eight millimeter. My turn. And yes, your turn. Okay. I am going to go with uh, Trapped in Paradise from Dude. 93. Is that on yours? So this is actually the turning point in my list. Holy uh, crap. This is what, number what? five. This is number five. Wow. It's in. I wanted to put it in the top because for me, I love this movie. I watch it every Christmas. Okay. Um, I haven't seen it in. I haven't seen it in possibly 15 years, but I love me, this I, movie so much. No, no, Jeff, I've seen it literally every year since it came out. Like I'm I used to watch it in the nineties, like all the, like religiously yeah. watch it in the nineties. I don't understand why it's not more popular. It's funny as shit. And Nicholas yeah. Cage, it's the only, the reason I put it on my list. I told you I was going for dynamic. The reason I put it there. Number five was because mm -hmm. it's the only time he did improv. Really? I mean, he's not really, that's like, an improv movie. A lot of most there, I, there's a making of I forget where I saw, it, but I think it was Get HBO. The freak out of here, where it was the one movie where he was allowed to improv dialogue. This isn't just improving, screaming, and reactions. Oh this is God. him actually improving dialogue on top of his own mannerisms. And if you watch that movie with that lens, it makes it ten times funnier. It's already really funny because then you've got you know you got John Lovitz and uh, Dana Carvey going all out with their characters. And Nicolas Cage is trying to match them because he knows he's not a comedy persona like them back then. You know what I mean? And right. The back and forth, the, the the push and pull between all three of them is just, to me, it's hilarious. I'm long I, overdue for a revisit. You need to do a rewatch, man. I, need, it's a sweet movie, too. It's such a sweet Christmas movie. What I remember, I, I just remember the, the Three Stooges-esque energy between... Yeah. John Lovitz, Dana Carvey, and um, what's his face and Cage, yeah, and they're just they are. The, it's just like what, like what a what a crazy pair, and they literally are. They're just kind of doing. It's not exactly Three Stooges by any means, but it's just well, they're playing three brothers, and they yeah, all, all three of them. One is a kleptomaniac, the other is like a, a lying sociopath, and then Nick Cage is the straight man. It's but, just, but their family is crooked. He's so, such a mo. He's yeah. such a mo, and that's what yeah. that's what I love it's, about it, that. He role. is a mo. It, for, it's a movie that people don't know, which annoys me. It, yeah, it, people are not people, familiar with that. They're not familiar with it. Yeah, uh, like you, what it, like for anyone listening, what it's about basically is the three bro brothers rob a bank of a small town on Christmas, and then end right. up fall, then end up like befriending the people of the town, and then trying to return the money. <laughs> it's, so yeah, it's such a sweet movie. And it's extremely funny. And Cage's it's a movie performance that would not. So. And you know what's funny? Like, if it came out today, nobody would even blink an eye. Like, that's what's yeah. sad. Not yeah. that I guess I seem. I, it, it seems that 
people haven't really blinked an eye even back then. But yeah. like, you know, it's just uh, well, back then it was panned for his performance. His performance was panned. You know what? I'm going to I'm putting it in my I'm going to go see where it's streaming. I'm going to revisit I'm pretty it. sure it's like on HBO Max or something. It's it's yeah, yeah. I, it's just it's just a phenomenal film. Haven't seen it in forever. I'm Love surprised it's, it's on your list. Always, I'm happy, man, because because it's always stuck out to me. Yeah. His his role as like that like Moish character has always stuck out to me, and it's always been a big talking point for me in terms of all of his versatility and what he is capable of doing. Well, like I said, imp- he's improving a lot of those lines, so you need to watch it with that lens. You know what? DLW actually brings up a good point here. He's talking about Groundhog's Day, and in a weird kind of way, this is Cage's. Groundhog yeah, Day, I was, in the sense yeah. that they're like trapped in the town, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, they they are trapped there, and also it does have that same nineties same vibe, that nineties like, aesthetic, especially the nineties winter snow, aesthetic. Yeah, it's you it's know it's kind of snow in the winter, and yeah. the studio. The, it's like has the same studio production of Groundhog Day, right? You know what I mean? Right. It's just like it has that vibe. So definitely, uh, that's a good double feature. Groundhog double Day, feature, double feature. Paradise. You're right, because trapped in paradise. Right. You could Groundhog Day could be almost called that. You know what I mean? Yeah, it could be <laughs> yeah. called trapping. You're right. Yeah, You're right. Yeah, You're yeah. right. Um, so, trapping uh, Groundhog Day. All right, it's your turn. Okay, so that was my number five. So I'm gonna have to go back one because we didn't because I didn't do a six. This I is have a feeling six. that three more of these are gonna be the same. I already Pro- know. We, we might maybe. <laughs> this is a movie by uh, the, the the biggest Marvel fan in the world, directed by the biggest Marvel fan in the world. Uh, this movie exhibits insomnia. And depression, like I think no other in his performance. Uh, I know what this which is. is. Already know what bring, it is. Bringing out the dead. Bringing out the dead. Martin Scorsese is bringing out the dead. Uh, this is uh, a movie that I would also fold into my turning point because there was like a two punch back in the day. Everything is so blurry now, Jeff. You know how getting old is. Oh, yeah. But I remember seeing Bringing Out the Dead and I was like, oh, Nick Cage is like a real incredible actor. Oh my God! You know, like I mean, it opened my eyes to him in a in a way I didn't under I didn't think of, of him as. I haven't seen it in twenty two years. What are you doing, man? You're like the Nick Cage guy. You gotta I, be. I've on this seen shit. it. I've <laughs> seen it. I just haven't seen it in twenty two years. It's something that needs. Uh, well, it's Scorsese, so you should see it. Uh, you should revisit it just because he's worked with every director. Think about this. He has worked or been in. He's been in a Tarantino film, even if it was for two seconds. Technically mm-hmm. not. It was Rob Zombie, but. He's been in a Tarantino film. He's been in a Rodriguez film. He's been in Scorsese, Herzog, Coppola, Coen Brothers, mm-hmm. John Woo, Michael Bay, Schumacher. Schumacher. I mean, he has worked with every he needs, great. He needs to Lynch. Hit a, he needs, Lynch. He, Scott. Um, Scott. He needs to hit a Spielberg at some point before they both die. Right. And he needs to be in an actual Quentin Tarantino film. I so desperately yeah, want right. to see him in the final tarantino film it would just be it would make my day it would make my day <laughs> that'd be incredible so great but yeah bring, great bringing pick. out the dead please revisit i like i don't i will i since you haven't seen it in so long i don't want to spoil anything it's just insomnia on screen has never I, been portrayed as i don't well. remember it at all i really don't i you just know, remember well, him you remember he's an emt and, he's an emt and i remember yeah. that they're ghosts and that's all i remember yeah like it's I just don't like it's just it's just a perfect movie to watch when you can't sleep Gotcha. It's like, yeah, it's just that perfect movie. So that was a turning point movie for me, too. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Great. Uh, is it on me? It's on me? Okay. Uh, yeah, because I'm at number four, but I think I just went. So you go. Okay. Um. Okay. Uh. My. Okay. This is talk about controversial, but I'm putting it on here. Mm-hmm. Um. What I am picking the crudes. I am picking the crudes. It's not Why? on my list. It's not on my list. Why so. am I picking the crudes? And like I said, I mine is not top ten per se, even though I have that clickbaity in the list up uh, in the in the title for this thing. Uh, I I purposely left out Wild at Heart. I did it on purpose. Yes, it's a great performance. Wild at Heart is great. Nobody is saying it's not. Great. No one's saying it's not. But I left it out because that's because I already had too many iconic ones, and I could not. Do you got to under anyone listening? You got to understand how hard it was to make ten. This is an impossible list it, to make. It, it was an impossible task. And it's, I'm picking the crudes. I'm yeah. picking the crudes because it's Nicolas Cage doing a voiceover role, and his voice is so good that it elevates the movie. Because I got to tell you, it's a good movie though. The story is great. Yeah, the story is great. The animation is so bland and mediocre; it's almost nigh unwatchable. 
because of well, how the character designs they got they take a moment to get used to. A, a big moment. And and yeah, I gotta do. tell you, they, yeah. they are just it's just it, it is really hard. And I put it on because of the kids. And I also was like, okay, this is a Nicolas Cage film hitting two birds with one stone. Uh, but I really watched this reluctantly. And by the end of the movie, I was so taken aback uh, by how Nicolas Cage just using his voice not only elevated the movie, but brought so much depth to the character using only his voice. It shows you the power of a voice of a good voiceover actor. And that's why I wanted to put it on my list because I, I felt that it really showcases an aspect of Cage where he's got his hands tied behind his back. He's not what? using his face. He's not using his 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 body. He can only use his voice to uh, make you smile. And he does a great job as the dad. Let's also say he, you know, he 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 uh, accomplished a feat that no that no other voice actor pretty much ever has, which is he's the only man to voice Superman and Spider Man in the same year. That's pretty incredible. Yeah, that he's is... the only guy to ever do that in a major motion picture, two major motion pictures. And you know, so. just to touch real quick, Cage really cares about comic books. Like, I don't think you guys realize well, his name is Cage compl- because of yeah, right. Cage. <laughs> right. He named himself because here's the thing. Yes, everybody knew that he was the son of uh, a Coppola, that his mm-hmm. uncle was Francis Ford Coppola, that he's from a famous Hollywood family. However, he still like did, the, you know, cut the toes off of his foot by changing his name. He could have banked on that name and he chose not to. So even if he had connections, he was still trying to go out on his own merit as a as Cage instead of Coppola. And that for that, I give him like oodles and oodles of respect. Also, not only did he want to play Superman and almost played Superman, but he loved Superman so much that he named his son Cowell Cage. His Which, son's you know, first name is Cowell. I don't I mean, know if you know this, but I'm like, we've talked about this on your show. I'm a huge Superman fan. So yeah, yeah, yeah. We, we talked about Cage this, yeah. on that. And I would have loved, loved to have seen that movie so much. I mean, yeah. That documentary is good, though. The documentary is yeah. phenomenal. And yeah, R.A.P. Yeah. to John Shep, Sheps, who's, mm-hmm. who passed away. But he he gave us we didn't get the movie, but we got we got something that allowed us to imagine what that movie could have been. And for that, we're eternally grateful. And he got everybody to participate. Everybody is in that movie that like I, th- I don't think Cage is in the movie, but Tim Burton is in the film. Kevin Smith is in the film. I mean, it's qu- quite an undertaking to get these people to talk about uh, what essentially are some sour grapes. And I, I really feel like if that did happen, it would have been one of those weird anomalies that we all finally look back on. Right. Like, I, you know I what I mean? Would, I think it would have been, dude, He w- it would have taken, because here's the thing. At that point, Nicolas Cage has done the three biggest action movies of the 90s or some of the big, biggest action movies of the 90s. That movie would have catapulted him to God status. Like he just yeah. would have been God, like a 90s God. Right. Um, and he ended up doing City of Angels <laughs> with Meg Ryan, where he plays a fallen angel. Like, hey, you nothing wrong with that. No, I love it. I yeah. love it. But that's what yeah. I'm saying. Like, he goes everywhere. Nick yeah, Cage yeah. goes everywhere. Oh, I can't so, be Superman. Um, well, I'll do this. <laughs> right. Yeah. So, so the Croods is on my list. I salute okay. the Croods. I just think great, great voiceover. Um, yeah. Have you seen the second one? I have not. I, I it hasn't come out yet, has it? I'm pretty sure it's available. Yeah. Uh, Amy, Kick Ass was our first pick. We that was my number ten, it. Amy. Yeah, yep, we love, love it. Kick Ass, love Kick Ass. Um, so you said it's not a movie, but Nick Cage actually Netflix documentary series on swearing. It's yeah, I watched it. That's great. I have not seen it yet. I want to watch that, Jeff. I will. Um, Trapped in Paradise was my number five. Right. So my my number four. Once again, this is a meat and potatoes cage, but. If it's not on your list, I'm going to be surprised because, duh, he's literally, it's face-off. He's playing someone else. Of course, face-off is it has on to, my I list. I mean, it's, it's face-off. I couldn't, and it's not meat and potatoes. It's anything but meat and potatoes. Well, you it's explain... ca- meat and potatoes cage. Not meat and potatoes. It's meat and potatoes cage. Like him being crazy, him doing something outrageous, him doing something daring. He does, but he, you know? this is one of Cage's most... Besides adaptation, which I have not seen, but I've been told all about, I still haven't seen it. It's on you my have, list. You have, don't let's not talk about that because it might Look, come up. 
<laughs> if that's uh, and of course it's in, of course it would come up, and yeah, I'm sure yeah. it would have been on my list had I seen it, but I have not seen it yet. However, yeah, Cage before Cage would do adaptation and do basically play twins and do two performances at the same time. He did Face Off, and here's what's crazy about Face Off: his per his performance is, as Mike Myers and Shrek would say, is layered like onions. Um, he <laughs> it's onionic. It's onion. <laughs> Okay, that goes on a t-shirt. It's onionic. My friend Mike uh, made that <laughs> word up, and I've been using it for years. It never caught on. It's onionic. Layered. No, no, Amy, Amy, I have seen Face... Amy, I've been watching Face Off since the 90s. I love Face Off. I yeah. haven't seen Adaptation. Once again, another great director, too, right. John Woo. You work with John the best, Woo. you get the best. That's right. And yeah. and by the way, I forgot how long Face Off was. Face Off is two and a half hours long. It's a monster. But monster you know what? Film. I doesn't feel it doesn't feel slow. There, there is so much crazy shit that happens. There's like anti gravity boots. <laughs> there's, I mean, you know, there's. It's there's, one of my favorite movies ever. Like ever. Like when I think of like movies that I could just in, like I watch to feel good, it's Face Off is one of them. That's that's a good way to put it. It's face ham on off rye. Is ham on rye. Cage. Yeah. See, like he. That. Yeah. Meat and potatoes. Ham on rye. You get okay, what I'm fine, saying. Fine. 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 Yeah. But but here's what's happening. Here's what's happening. So he put. So it's Nicolas Cage playing caster troy mm -hmm. playing what's what's john travolta's character's uh, name Ar uh sean archer sean archer thank you this is like i mean off that's the top like of my head the name. Off yeah the top of that's my like head. not well i know stanley goodspeed but like i <laughs> yeah, don't right, right. I, I can't i i, I like uh, sean archer right so it's nicholas cage playing caster troy who is then sometimes playing sean archer <laughs> who is then sometimes playing wait 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 hold on I, i've lost myself no no wait a you're right you're right that's, that's yeah it's nicholas cage playing caster troy and it's, then playing sean up, archer to bring up tropic thunder it's a dude playing a dude who's disguised as another dude right and then at, <laughs> when he's in jail it's sean it's sean it's sean archer trying to be caster troy yes so the <laughs> levels it's 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 nicholas cage being Caster Troy, then switching to Sean Archer, who's then playing Caster Troy as Sean Archer. Also, so he's doing this oh movie is elevated because also we have John Travolta. Well, what other movie has someone doing a Nick Cage impression? Yeah, Con Air is great. I love Con Air. Um, we'll talk about Con Air. We'll, soon. We can, we'll talk. Oh, really? Okay. <laughs> but you know what I mean? Like, it's not just the, di the dynamic nature of uh, Cage's performance. You literally have someone that's being the Nick Cage we know and love, but it's. Right. I mean, and this is what besides vampires yeah, that shit is, fucking movie in a movie that's so insane. I wish they yeah. made movies like this still, because the thing about uh, face off is it's delivered so straightforward, so dramatic. John, yeah, 100 percent. Mm -hmm. It never addresses the fact that it is literally nuts. It <laughs> never like face everything off. off. Yeah. Everything about it is crazy. But now they've never talked about. They've talked about the sequel, and there's yeah. a sequel that's coming. And I listen, I am all for this, especially because there's nothing, excuse me, that's the seltzer. There is nothing that would prevent both John Travolta and Nicolas Cage returning. And then it's like, how do you bring Nicolas Cage back if he's spoilers died? I mean, he's obviously the psychotic ghost that lives inside Sean Archer's head. <laughs> and you can make a whole movie about Sean Archer having Caster Troy live in his head and how he's trying to possess his body and also take it over. Or or what is like what is what's the premise gonna be like brain off where they just switch brains? Brain. <laughs> I don't of, know, man. I don't know. I don't know. But like the the it's just so like there's like a vacuum cleaner that actually like holds the face that's been cut off. The face gets cut off with a laser and then a vacuum suction thing sucks the face up it. and then it's just it's great man it's so... also it's just like the filmmaking is great the, the scene where nick cage is smoking the cigarette with his face literally surgically removed right looking into the blurry refre reflection incredible just incredible absolutely it's so good absolutely incredible yeah. and you know and this is one of the many uh times where cage becomes a casualty of the meme because at the very beginning for no reason at all with no I, maybe it's due to like a language barrier i don't know how well john woo speaks english or if he had a translator on the set um but you know nicholas cage being like like i could just imagine him going hey what if i uh what if i just grab this girl's ass and then just go 
ha <laughs> like just like that that face that we that's the on the thumbnail of this thing yeah i mean just for no reason at all it, it's just it's 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 and that's, hyper, the, that's the gif right that's the that's the gif the famous that gif. we yeah. all that we all worship and love and yeah um but there's there's some seriously great mechanics going on behind the cageness of this role which is why it's on my list it's on your list great pick do you have but any other the, words you want to say about that i mean I don't. That's about. That's all we got to say. Without reviewing the movie Face Off, that's all we right. need to say. But I, I'm glad it's on both of our lists because, like, how could it not be? Yeah. How could you not? Fantastic. Right. fantastic. 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 Moving on. I I think it's your turn. I might because Face oh, Off my is turn. my number four. So. Right, and then Face Off was also one of mine. Yeah. Okay, so I'm going right into. I, I guess I got to go right into Con Air. Con Air. It's not on my list. I love Con Air to death, though. Let me say that. I, I love it so much. I, it mm-hmm. was impossible for me not to put this on my list mm-hmm. because of the. He's a set. Okay, so Nicholas Cage is essentially doing a Forrest Gump. Like he's doing a convict Forrest Gump who who like like probably the best the worst best version no sorry the best worst version of how someone goes to jail like i was i killed somebody but i did it because i was protecting my my pregnant wife like right right like you're yeah. going away for manslaughter it's like i feel like in any situation like someone would not go to jail for that like yeah they would probably get off in some way shape or form especially as like a decorated officer but of course like the pot we need the plot contrivance what is it he has I, to go to jail. I, I love what the judge says in con air when he's like because of your military military training you're basically a deadly weapon so i'm gonna punish right. you for that right that because we made you into a deadly weapon and it's your <laughs> fault for for defending your pregnant wife <laughs> so it's like it's like we've we've Not literally 90s, given you yeah. yeah we've <laughs> given you a license to kill overseas but yeah. like god forbid you use it just to, to protect your your pregnant wife and right. in the year 2021 with all of the you know gun nuts out there who and all the stand your ground laws that exist you could uh, you couldn't imagine someone going to jail for using their wet their hands to protect their pregnant wife it would just like i feel like it would just be ridiculous also um, like while this isn't a this isn't i wouldn't say simon west is a known director this is a jerry bruckheimer staple so he right. worked while he didn't work with maybe a director of name and bay jerry produced bruckheimer it. bay yeah. produced this right this is like this is uh yeah he worked with bruckheimer Productions. so you could add that to the list of the greats, you know, right. that he's worked with. And it, it, it honestly, for many years, I thought Con Air was actually a Michael Bay movie. I did not realize that it was not. The style is so close to Bay. It's such a yeah. Michael Bay film without being a Michael Bay film. Like you might as well. It, it's I just, can tell you what the difference is, but we, it, it's a different podcast. Yeah. It, well, it just has, yeah. it has the tone and the feel it of, uh, you know what it is? It's Armageddon. The score. The score. I think it's you, the camera you know, work too. To me, it's, it's, me, it's it's camera me, work. Con Air. I wouldn't say Armageddon as much as to me. It's Con Air and The Rock. You yeah, know, those two. That's go right. Together. He did that's, work with Bay that's in peanut the butter Rock. and jelly. Right there, they work together right. perfectly. And 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 it's just um, Con Air again. Like I said, he is he is very much a, like a, almost like a he's like a slightly smarter Forrest Gump who is you know um, just like. Uh, apple pie american who uh you know does stay uh just does time does time so he can get back home to his daughter again see his daughter and his his wife who has stayed faithful for seven years also like (laughs) i'm gonna give con air credit for like you know how like your taste develops over the years yeah and stuff and you realize the different things that you like that some other people like, like I have, I have some best buddies who, when we saw Con Air, they hated it. Like we saw it in mm. theaters and they, and they hated it. And it was because of Nick Cage's accent. They're like, his accent is terrible. Once again, That's- throwing it. But to me, even as a kid, I was like, can't you see how fun this is? You know what but, I mean? Like back then, as a kid, I even saw it. But I couldn't know. you imagine? I I totally imagine you'd have to ask him. But you'd imagine that he saw Forrest Gump in 1994 and was like, probably, yeah. This is a great template for my character. I forget his name in the God. What's his name in the thing? In, in Con Air. Uh, yeah, I have to look that up. It's uh, right. Oh uh, man, I, now I need Cameron to, I Poe. Cameron Cam- Poe. How can I forget Cameron friggin' Poe? Well, okay, dude? but Jeff, you you remember the name of John Malkovich's character, right? Oh, say- sayonara. 
Cyrus the Virus, man. There you go. Yeah, Cyrus the Virus. Yeah. Of course. I mean, that cast was just insane. And of course, uh, Sweet Home Alabama, it was like the the uh, really important. Uh, and I love the the guy who the pilot. He also is the driver of the fire truck. Like that's always his role. Yeah. Like yeah. whatever, like whatever needs to be operated. He's the guy to do uh, it. MC Ganey, I believe his name is. He's in a bunch of stuff. Yeah, it's Swamp just, Thing. Swamp Thing in the movie. That's what his name. Was. He yeah. Swamp Thing. Perfect. And, and it's just it really is. It, it really, also, really is great. For anyone that is not too happy with Dave Chappelle as of late, it's a great movie to watch. <laughs> oh to see. He gets thrown out of the airplane. Yeah, he gets thrown out of an airplane, right? Yeah, it, yeah. it's just, uh, I forgot Chappelle was in that. Yeah, it, yeah. it really is. He sets a guy on also, fire. Just, the, just <laughs> I mean, we're just talking about Con Air now, but st- the, the whole presentation of Steve Buscemi, remember? Oh, so just like yes. pulling him out of the truck and then him yep. just sitting there with them talking and acting like and even there's like a an um, homage to frankenstein with steve buscemi in it, like in that movie when he's with the little girl and they're having a tea right. party it's, yes. like, it's like oh, i didn't even think like, about it like yeah that. it's like That's exactly like, what that is you watch that movie you're like why is there a frankenstein but you're you're here, terrified man? for that little girl <laughs> yeah, right you're terrified for that little girl and yeah. um yeah phenomenal film um so that is that is my, not a crossover that's on my list that's, that's not yeah. a crossover cameron, cameron poe is and, Love Cam and Poe. And I just want to say it's not on my list, not because I don't love it or his performance. It just didn't make the 10. Like, I love fucking Con Air. I just, of course, we, we, yeah. re- it, this was very hard to do as we, yeah, it's very hard in, to do. Yeah. I just don't want it on that. record. Like, I don't like Con Air. So. Right. Yeah. Um, number three for me. Yeah. We've already, we, Oh, I love Snake Eyes. Snake I actually, Eyes is great. De Palma. I, he's worked De Palma. with De Palma. He's worked work with De Palma. I just he's worked Snake with Eyes. every single act. He's worked with every single great director yeah. there ever was. Yeah. Um, number three, we've already talked about it a few times. It's Raising Arizona. I, I had to put it on my list, up. but it's great. Yeah, it's great. I mean, it's early cage, so, but it's also like this is the turning point. This is when he's starting to make his name for himself as like in a, a, a like a critically yeah. acclaimed actor. You but know, you know how like there's every it's hard to explain, but every actor has that role where when you watch the movie, you don't think of the actor anymore. Mm-hmm. Like Nick Cage, I'm not going to say he does that often, but like for John Travolta, I would say it's Paul Fiction. When I watch Paul Fiction, I don't see John Travolta. I never do. Like that's the one Vic Vega. Yeah, I see I see Vic Vega. When I watch Raising Arizona, I see high. You know what I mean? Like yeah. he is I don't it doesn't compute that it is Nick Cage in my mind's eye. That's I know that's weird to say, but that is the reason it's number three on my list because I think that's where he transcends Nick Cage early on. I made buttons with yeah. with uh with his face from raising Arizona on it yeah. and on the buttons, it says, despite all my rage, I am still watching Nicholas cage. <laughs> and it's, I, I made those, I made those about 10 years ago. And the next time I see you, I will give you one. I will take one. I know I you would appreciate that. One. Yeah. Yeah. You should give me one. We saw each other this year. I know we actually know we saw did. each other. We actually met and we never met, met in real life. And then we met in real life. It was, it was awesome. And we, yeah, we met to watch our movies on screen. Yes. We were, yeah. we made a feature length film together, technically, technically. And, yeah. um, we and watched we it on, shorts. Yeah. We watched it at the Alamo draft house and it was awesome. It was it a really good. At the Al- yeah. It was pretty cool. It was a highlight of 2021, a year of oh, not yeah. many highlights. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I hope that next year, genre blast, it will be things will be safer and yeah. better than yeah. before. We will see. Uh, um, so that was my number three. It's a yeah, we don't need to really say much about it. I mean, the only thing I would say is that he is. You know, what's interesting about his performance? And again, I haven't seen Raising Arizona in a very long time. It's been a while. since. Yeah, what are you doing, man? But <laughs> but um. You're the cage he, guy. I am, but that but that doesn't mean I watch them over and over and over again. Oh, Some of them I do. For me, like, Raising Arizona is a, a like a comfort staple. watch for me. Yeah, uh, it's also uh, when, the one time I met Edgar Wright. I yeah. asked him what his favorite movie of all time was, and he said Raising Arizona. You know what's interesting about the film? Yeah. That's awesome. You yeah. know what's interesting about the film? It uh, again going back to like cart like the cartoonishness and how he's 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 on record said that he was trying to embody. Woody Woodpecker, but he's not doing like an like, impression of Woody Woodpecker. Yeah, he's not yeah. doing an impression of a cartoon. It's like it's like an energy that he's trying to embody 
There, he's like a sad Woody Woodpecker in that movie. And yeah, but you it's know? there's a sadness for that movie. His performance is very realist. It's not like zany slapstick. It's it's very much set in that world. Like it doesn't feel like he's sort of stepping over the bounds. bounds. No, I mean, look at the third act of that movie. It the tone yeah. fits. He doesn't feel out of place at all. Like, right. I don't think I don't Mad think, Max guy. <laughs> yeah, he, he never his performance never exceeds the zaniness. Right. Ever. It right. stays all what's the Cohen brothers? They're kind of master filmmakers. Mm-hmm. They know tone. I mean, yeah. yeah, you know what I mean? They, 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 I'm, I'm dying right now them. because all I want to do is see the tragedy of Macbeth and it's not. Well, now it's like full on Omicron here. Everybody I know is sick from COVID right now. Like everybody oh. I know. I'm the only one who hasn't gotten sick yet. Knock on wood. I, I have several friends. Uh, I have several oh. friends that have it. I'm, I'm basically quarantined in my house. So this yeah, is there's, not much, there's not much you can really do yeah. uh, for New Year's. So it's kind of like, you no, know, I'm, I'm, I'm sitting right here for New Year's. So no, um, <laughs> Or I'll the, watch some Nick Cage movies now, I guess. You should well, I'm gonna definitely watch Trapped in Paradise in eight millimeter after this episode. Like I just and 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 bringing out the dead. I these are all films that I really need to I need to revisit these films. Yeah, you got to so long. I consider you the Nick Cage man in my life. Like yeah, you are the Nick Cage guy. Seen them, yeah, but just because I haven't seen them recently does not mean that I no, you know I, I'm any less saying, of a Nick Cage guy. I, I ju- I'm just saying I'm not disappointed, I'm just shocked. Right. How's that? Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. Um, okay. You did raising Arizona. That was number three. That was my number okay. three. So it's your turn. Okay. Ready for mine is yeah. okay. I'm going for the uh the rock is on my list. Okay. Um, one of my favorite movies of all time. Is it on your list? No. I shocked. This, I'm shocked. This is, this is a performance list for me. The rock is make, a film. If it was a film list. The Rock right. would have been high up because The Rock is like I could. I'm a huge Michael Bay fan, except for Transformers movies. So, like, same, same. yeah, like I, I love, I love Michael Bay, but uh, yeah, the, uh, the Rock did not make the list because while the performance is great, for me it doesn't stand out like these other ones do. But I love it nonetheless. You know, First yeah. of all, you have. Okay, so the reason why it's on my list, and and yeah. I'm not going to talk about the film. I'm going to talk about why the performance is on yes, my list. Because please. Stanley Goodspeed is a, a, a wonderful amalgamation of leading men. It's an action film, but he is not an action star. He is a reluctant geek nerd, self-described geek nerd, who basically, basically what he kind of is, he's almost like an ash. Mm-hmm. In Bruce Campbell, he's like an Ash type character who is in over his head. Yeah, who's in over his head and reluctantly becomes the blood soaked, demon slaying, chainsaw wielding guy by the end of the film. Yeah, he he starts off. He's never even held a gun and or he only had a gun in field training. And by the end of the movie, he's killed a person for the first time. And he has to stab himself in the chest with the needle to inoculate himself from the poison. And he has to. The, the whole road flare scene it's just it's like it's a it's a it's your, sh- to me the road flare sh- scene the shots used is oh. the michael bay of all michael bay scenes. but it, it and it's just, it just it's just yeah. purely it's talk about great comfort food it's like pure it's all, just wonderful. it takes me back to the 90s in my childhood That's oh, like, that the, that movie just does and yeah. And so he's would you consider this his I would consider this one of his most wholesome performances. And I know that's weird to say. No, yeah, just, he's very he's very wholesome. His he's character a, is wholesome. He does some mean, heinous things, right. but he's wholesome. No, he's a totally a wholesome guy. He's yeah. a nerd who's he's a nerd scientist who's into the Beatles. And he's like he 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 likes strumming his guitar, and he's got this beautiful pregnant fiance, and life is you know good for him and what he does, and he gets he gets basically sucked into this insane situation, and he teams up with what many have theorized as uh, what happened to Sean Connery's James Bond, yeah, yeah, and, right, <laughs> and basically has to. Uh, you know, it, it turns into, I don't know what you would call it. It's not a siege film. Well, it is. It's like a reverse. Well, it's a siege film, but then it turns into like a, a last man standing sort of film where they have to, one by one, they're knocking off all yeah. the guys in these elaborate set pieces. And um, yeah, as I said, by the end, 
he has turned into the blood soaked action hero that he needed to be at the start of this film. And so Stanley yeah. Goodspeed has always been a phenomenal character. And you know, what a great he, name too. Yeah. And, and <laughs> you know what else is great? Like there are just these wonderful moments, like where they're in the jails and, and they, th and, and, and he's like, Stanley is like so upset. He's like, well, I don't know. He's like, he's like, tell me, how'd you get out of this one? Like he just like, he go flies off the rail. Their chemistry together is so good in the bond of friendship that they have as when they become teammates. That's like the teamwork that they need in order to pull it off. And Sean Connery is very um, uh, matter of fact, like, do, 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 do. Is also, he like you got to remember too, like for cage, this must've been huge. Like to huge. act huge, basically a, it's not a buddy cop movie, but it's a buddy movie with at the right. time, maybe one of the biggest stars in the world. Right. Right. Like and, your yeah. best. I'll do my best. Your best. Your best losers always whine yeah, about their best. best. Winners go, go home, home and, and fuck, fuck the prom, the prom queen. queen. Carla yeah. was the prom queen. <laughs> uh, it's just it is. Also, uh, I, I should say I'm not, I'm not going to go get it, but I actually <laughs> there's two there's two DVDs that I own that I will never sell because they'll never be reprinted and they don't even want to admit they exist. One is the Criterion Collection copy of Armageddon. Of Armageddon? And the other is the Criterion <laughs> Collection copy of The Rock. Yes. Okay. The That's Rock amazing. is a Criterion film. Yes, and they, they both they're, were. And they're ashamed of it. They'll never like Explosion. advertise it and they'll <laughs> never reprint them. But I have both co official copies of the DVD. I knew this. Listen, I think <laughs> you and I should remake The Rock. We'll star in it too. Oh, Who do you want to be? Do you want to be Nick Cage or Sean Connery? I mean, you do a better Sean Connery. So. Okay, I'll be Sean Connery and you'll be yeah. Nick Cage and we will do yeah. our own green screen. <laughs> I told Bob the other day can on our, one of my heads, podcasts. Can our heads just be cut out and put on their bodies? Like it's not we could. I what what did I I told Bob that I wanted him to remake a movie that he really loved and I wanted him just to insert himself in it. What was the movie? I forget. Um oh, I forget what it was. It was a I challenge. Told, I challenged you to do it. Well, it, it was I said I wasn't going to. Yeah, you you turned at my challenge. I, down. I turned it down instantly. What, what I, was, what I don't was, remember what it was, but what I did tell you is that I do plan to insert myself into a scene from Never Any Story. That'd be great too. Yeah, because I did that ten years ago very badly, <laughs> and I want to do it right because I have I'm better now at you know doing things at uh, editing and stuff. So okay, wanna, Bob made yeah. Bob has two years in a row. Although I think your film this year was better than the one you made last year. We both Bob and I do this thing called the Sick and Wrong Film Festival seventy two hour debacle, and Bob outdid himself. He he won an award for this film. I I don't even know how it's it's nigh undescribable. I hope Bob puts it on youtube because i it, it will eventually it. be i'm i actually okay. there's a i actually have a segment for it that i didn't have time to finish so i've been You're gonna add that in i'm gonna add that in it's actually like like the fact that i won is super like i'm i can't believe it i'm so happy about it but I was oh, also so like, does, it was so well I turned, deserved well, i turned it in and i was like this thing isn't even finished i was like okay and so i was really happy everyone liked it but there's one more segment i want to pop i mean in. it's not so, like it's not I, and this is I'm really the plot pot calling the kettle black because I made a feature length film that has no narrative plot, really like yeah. pseudo narrative plot. I just want to say that before I say what I'm going to say. Um, your film doesn't really have much of a plot. It's not like a it's a it's, sketch. It's, it's a like sketch. a sketch. Yeah, it's, it's like a sketch. A sketch. Yeah. It's not like <laughs> hence why I want to finish the joke that I was yeah. making. <laughs> so like it, there's a part of it that I like. I just haven't had a it chance. It just begins really and it ends, and everything in between the beginning and ending is just yeah. like utterly ridiculous. Once again, it's, it's, found foot, it's a found footage joke too. So right, oh, it's like, great. Yeah, they're all great. we like. I've been making found footage stuff for the last two years because we've been in this situation. So well, you found footage is like the only, and that's how I realized I was able to make a feature. I was like, you could make a feature if you just do found footage. It's the only right. way you could do it. It's the only yourself. way you can do it. Right. It's the only and way you, you're filming it. yourself. And right. Exactly. For me, for me, it's been found footage on the internet. There you, you go. Know, that's much. even that's even better because yeah. you can yeah. do more stuff with that. Also, you just have one camera, right? You know, it's not found footage with a camcorder. It's found footage like you can everything talk. happens in this frame, it right? And you matter. can like talk yeah. to the camera, like the yeah, camera yeah. is a character. That's what's right. so funny. It's just that kind of found footage. Um, okay, getting back to so so that's the rock is on mine. What's right? What's so yours? my okay. We're now we're down to my number two. Yeah, my number two is one you've already admitted you haven't seen, which is. Adaptation. Um, I have not seen adaptation. You definitely, need to, 
you sh- you got to see adaptation. Of course, I will. I, I almost don't. I mean, I it's an incredible performance. Yeah, do not do not spoil it for me, please. I even I'm though not it's an spoil old movie, it. it's twenty years old, but still, it is. The, this isn't a spoiler of the content. It's the only movie to ever win an Oscar for uh, best writing for a character that doesn't exist. That's crazy. And Nick Cage plays the on-screen version of that character, which is the only time yeah. he's ever done that. But for anyone that uh, that watches this, if I have to describe why adaptation is number two, well, you haven't seen adaptation, so I, I can't wait. Yeah, I'm you have to see it, Jeff. Like I, I'm almost said, I can't talk about it, but you know that he plays. I'm sorry against, about that. You know that he he like plays against himself, though. That's like yeah, a, he's playing. I always yeah. thought that. I, well, I did watch like a pseudo making of it thing type thing. Yeah, and from what I understand, is he is playing twin brothers, and he is essentially when he did those scenes, he had to use an earpiece, and. One of his one of the 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 performances is like someone who's really like cranky all the time, and the other one's not so cranky. So it's like it's a it's a um yeah it's uh what is it what's the old sitcom, The Odd Couple. So there you go. Like yeah. that is, I mean, yeah. that's an incredibly that's a difficult what a difficult thing. He's to also do. he's he's playing Charlie Kaufman, right? And Charlie Kaufman's brother. So yeah, it's, uh, yeah, that's all I'll say. But it's a great movie. Uh, Can't wait to I'm, watch it. If I put, if I throw up, if when you do watch it, Jeff, I'll throw out a plug. Uh, on yeah. my podcast, we actually did uh, we did a script podcast about adaptation, and it's one of our more popular episodes. So, you okay, might take that after you watch it, okay, yeah. I will. Thank you. Yeah. That's that's on the Thundergrunt Network, Thundergrunt.com. Yeah, check that's, it out. And, and the, the show, link is in the description. Yeah, and the show is Writers Blockbusters, and right, I, I do it with two really uh, smart guys that know. You know. Show. I will say this about the show. It is, it's incredibly sticky. It sticks. It's sticky. And the thing about stickiness is you want things to be sticky, like stickers. Stickers stick to things. And you know who makes the best stickers all around? I do. I do. Who? Riotstickers.com. Riotstickers.com makes the best stickers ever. Riotstickers.com powers this channel. Did you know that? We're running a special promotion. With, I know you do. <laughs> I was talking about it. Riotstickers.com is doing a special promotion with the Frumus channel. If you use the code Frumus and you go into the description of this video, there's a link. You click on that link and you can get stickers. 50 three-inch by three-inch stickers for 50% off. It's normally $59 for 50 stickers. It's a really good deal for such large stickers. Three inches by three inches, that's a lot of real estate. So if you're an artist... And you have an you have some sort of image that you need to put on a sticker to stick on something, you can do that at riotstickers.com with the promo code from us. F-R-U, M is in Mary, E-S-S. That's from us. So down down in the link below, I mean down in the description below, you can see the link. You just click on that. And now we're just gonna play the 60 second video that goes, you know, you can't have the French fries without the mayonnaise. Oh, oh, uh, sorry. Yeah. Anyway, so uh, is it your turn or is it my turn? I believe it's uh, that adaptation was mine. I got one oh, left. So yes. it's okay. uh, your turn. So I have I have two here. And okay. all right, I'm going to go with the 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 surprising one. I also have one honorable mention for a very important reason. OK, Um, you can do an honorable mention. I, I have a whole list of honorable mentions. All right. Pick one honorable mention. Russ will be here till midnight. Okay. Um, the my. OK, so 
the next one on my list is da 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 the sorcerer's apprentice okay. Balthazar I was not expecting that Balthazar okay. in the sorcerer's apprentice he plays the sorcerer it's it was a live it was from 2010 it's a live action adaptation of Fantasia like, right of Fantasia with the sorcerer's apprentice and I'll be honest I haven't seen it in a very long time <laughs> Dude, wanna, I haven't seen that since it was released <laughs> but you want to know what I remember I was so blown away that he plays this like apprentice the sorcerer named Balthazar and it's just it's 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 a side of cage you don't see very often he's magic like he's an actual wizard he plays like this um mentor that? I don't know who I don't know who I don't, I don't even remember the plot really I just remember he's like a mentor that he's, he's essentially playing Mickey Mouse that's what no, no, no. The kid right? is Mickey Mouse. Is the kid he's Mickey the Mouse? wizard. He's, he's the, the wizard. wizard. Right. Okay. Yeah. And he's just, he plays, the, he just plays this magical role. And it's just, uh, it's just a type of role that you haven't, don't really see Nicolas Cage do. That Not to like say 10. that every Nicolas, no two Nicolas Cage. Oh, that was the same. That was John Turtletop, the director of National Treasure. That makes sense. That, that makes sense. sense. And it's right on the heels of National Treasure 2, I believe. Yeah. So, you know, uh, I yeah, I had I just wanted to add that on there. I I did enjoy the film. Definitely do for a revisit. Like I said, I'm trying. I didn't want to like hit Mandy and hit like the Vampire's Kiss, which I love. Everybody loves Vampire's Kiss. I didn't make my list, but but it's just I, it's yeah, great. it's done yeah. to death. It's done, it's to, done death. to death. So I wanted to pick performances that I wanted to highlight that I don't think people know enough about and should check out. So yeah. Sorcerer's Apprentice. Uh, chef's kiss that's the most surprising i think entry so far balthazar was, baby he's I great i was not expecting even to i wasn't even expecting to say sorcerer's apprentice tonight so that's amazing he, he's like um you know he he's just he's magical he's he's he, he's just like he's he's like the obi-wan kenobi in the sorcerer's apprentice that's what he is okay. like he's the guide for this like luke skywalker type character and he's just he's just stupendous i i really i highly recommend watching the sorcerer's apprentice at least once it's, it's I, I have to that's a that's a revisit for me yeah i have literally i don't even know if i could tell you what it's about <laughs> like i couldn't I, either so. i'll be on, i'll be yeah. honest i and you know what's funny when i was watching it i did not realize that it was an adaptation of fantasia yeah so i started to slowly put together i was like oh wait a minute Oh wait a minute! This is actually this is this is like this is Disney. This is what this is. Yeah. So I didn't know that. So I thought that was really cool that Nicolas Cage was in that. Didn't he also like? Uh, what was that other movie that was? It felt like almost too similar but that came out around the same time. It was Season of the Witch? So Season of the Witch is with, with uh, Ron, Ron Perlman. Ron Perlman. Yeah, I just and remember that coming. It's out. actually, it's actually really good. I actually I've really never like seen it. Oh yeah, I never it's saw great. It. It's really great. And they play crusading knights who have to transport this witch. And it's a whole, as a matter of fact, it would be a great double feature with the wicker man remake. It's, it's a whole with, without getting too deep into it. It's a whole is sheer. It like, is it real or is it not real sort of thing? Yeah. You know what I mean? Like you're, you're not sure which is which. Whoa. Sorry. <laughs> um, but it's really great. They start, All right. They're, I'll, they're, I'll they're give really it. Great. I'll give it a, a a rewatch. I just haven't thought about it in so long. No, it, I, also, it's cool. but I, it's cool. I I admit whenever uh, Halloween comes around, whenever anyone says season of the witch, like when Halloween, you know, Halloween three, yeah, I always go, oh man, I love Nick Cage. Like that's like a yeah. stupid joke I make every year, <laughs> just because you, you know, just have to. It's just really nice to see Nicolas Cage in a buddy in like a like a like a, a, a not buddy cop, but like you know just in like a uh you know their partners him mm -hmm. and ron perlman are partners and it's just great it's really really great so i, I recommend season of the witch season we'll call that a, a we'll call that an honorable mention though that wasn't that wasn't on the list yeah. so that was my tra uh so i said the sorcerer's apprentice do you, how many do you have left in your list i have one and one honorable mention oh so i thought it's, okay i have one left too okay and an honorable mention okay cool that's perfect so sorcerer's apprentice was your last one right yeah Yep. My number one. Yeah. Now this is, uh, this is, I want to really reiterate here. This is a performance list. This isn't a movie. Right. List. And this is a movie, which I find that most people haven't seen. They've only ever seen clips of it on YouTube. 
But I feel like in, the reason I'm putting it on here is I feel like when it comes to the oeuvre of Nick Cage, the entire embodiment of everything he does and he has done and did, it comes down to this movie, and that's Deadfall, 1993. I have one of my most anticipated Nicolas Cage films that I have never seen. I, you, Jeff, if you're going to be a Nick Cage guy. I know. Everybody tells me to see, see every Deadfall. single person tells me to see two films by Nick Cage, Red Rock West and Deadfall, and I've seen Deadfall. neither yet. I can't wait to see Deadfall. So Deadfall is directed by Christopher Coppola. It there you is, go. It's one of those movies that's like early 90s performance art. Christopher indie Coppola, film. that's his brother? I believe so. Uh, I yeah. have to look it up. But it is one of those like, it's like an art film, but it's also like a mobster movie. But it has yeah, stuff I in it that I, it. I don't want to spoil it. But No, please don't spoil you, that one. If you I'm sorry. Up, the reason the reason I originally saw it was because of one of those YouTube compilation. Like I think it was Nick Cage losing his shit. Right. And it was in there. Um, real quick, comrade, what is Here's give a me a, g- yeah, give me a one sentence synopsis without spoilers of what your tale is to tell <laughs> in, in the comments. Sorry, continue on, Bob. Oh yeah. Uh so I'm trying my best not to spoil Deadfall, but Jeff, yeah. this is where he has never even since let loose this hard like port of call he gets close but when it comes to like letting loose deadfall is the peak apex of nick cage a hundred percent word it's him going you know to 11 if to use that terminology that's right luke skinwalker this channel has misfits sam hayne danzig horror punk in general live shows from dingbats and just when you can't think it could get any more friggin gnarly there's Nick Cage. Nick Not Cage. only is this is like the sixth Nick Cage video we've done. There we oh there you go. God. Oh, there you go. All what? of your misfits seven inches were stolen. Dude, I'm so sorry to hear that. That is so okay, Bob. Just so you don't you don't realize that's like thousands and thousands that's and a thousands lot of money. Of dollar. It's a lot of money. Wow. I'm sorry, I'm sorry to hear that. Hear that. Yeah, it's terrible. Yeah, I hope you find them. Or... We hope you we hope it recovers yeah. truly. Yeah. Um <laughs> yeah, vampires kiss. So uh, Luke, um, I when I was making my list, I was trying to make it dynamic. So I was like, "You cannot put Vampires Kiss and Deadfall. I said the same thing. I, I was like the it, same thing. They're 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 very like similar eras of Nick Cage, and I went with the one that I thought was more extreme. Oh oh oh! You mean you mean that you couldn't have both? Yes, I couldn't. I don't think putting Vampires Kiss and Deadfall on this list would have left room for other stuff. So. I was like, you pick one or the other, you know, I, I have to, I, yeah, I wanted to leave. I mean, at the end of the day, like I, you know, vampire, first of all, vampire's kiss is a, a very, it's so, like, it's unique because of cage's performance, but also the, the, um, the plot is a great, it's a very interesting plot too. Like it's a, yeah. it's just like a really crazy bat shit movie. No pun intended. You know, oh my God, an original bullet, not, Night of the Living Dead and Halloween. So that probably, that's, if we're going by today's eBay prices, that's over $10,000 worth of records. I'm so sorry. That's like I don't, I, I don't know, I don't know this stuff, but I'm so yeah. sorry. That's terrible. That sucks. That's terrible. Let, let, Bob, uh, Cough Cool, uh, only 400 in existence from 1977, went for $22,000. Dollars, what one of the most expensive punk records of all time? Seven Holy inch, shit. two say two songs. Holy shit! Yeah, okay, stuff is like gold. Um, Holy crap. who knows when that bubble will burst? But while it's while it's there, God bless. Um, so no. see, see Deadfall, please, Jeff. Please. I will, I will. I, we, we might have to, we might have to do a whole episode on it if it's like really like re- that. Like, hey, I'm telling you, that's where he's. You've never seen him push harder. Uh, you've never seen him push harder than that. You won't. I wasn't ready for it when I saw it. It's also the movie is completely nuts. The movie is yeah, completely weird. I, and see, I don't know I how I feel about the movie. Sunny. I have to see Sunny, which is the only film Nicolas Cage ever directed. I haven't seen that either, so I, I'm down. Nicolas Cage plays like a pimp in it, like for like one scene, which I did watch on YouTube because I just wanted to see Nicolas Cage. Right. Uh, I'm surprised he hasn't. Di- I'm surprised Cage has not directed more films. I, I just feel like well, how he does he have time? That. He's uh, he's working. Well, he, produces, so much. He, he does produce a lot of stuff. Well, he has yeah. Saturn films. He did produce Shadow of the Vampire, which we always love to champion on this channel about I how we like. I love Shadow of the Vampire. 
And you know what I love more than Shadow the Vampire? That like Nicolas Cage does not like try to push or promote Shadow the Vampire by splattering his face on it. Like you would not know it's a Nicolas Cage film mm -hmm. at all unless you like look at the credits. Like it's he, he, so he did a real like um, Mel Brooks Elephant Man thing, right? Yeah, exactly. And yeah. Mel Brooks the Fly thing because and the, the Fly, fly right? Also, yeah, yeah. Um, so for my oh. final my final performance here. Before we go to honorable mentions. You, now, we should it. mention for anyone that jumped in late, you're not yeah. numbering yours. So this is just what you have left. Yeah, unfortunately. And yeah. and I, I have I'm not to, saying that's bad. I just want to no, say I have that, to apologize yeah. to Bob because Bob actually put his in order. But had that been the task, I wouldn't have been able to do it. It just wouldn't right. have happened. Gotcha. Yeah. I picked 10 performances that I that I really love and that I wanted to like share with the world and yeah. like tell people more about. So for my final performance, uh, this is going to come no surprise. Uh, it is Pig. I which I admit I have not seen, so don't okay, spoil so it. I will not spoil it. So yeah. we right. I will. I'm I will so I apologize that. for not seeing it. No, yet. don't apologize. Yeah. I'm I'm guilty of it. I, well. I I have heard nothing but fabulous things though. So here here's what I will. Here is <laughs> Luke Skinwalker says Cage Cage has been in three movies since the stream started. <laughs> They're, probably, um, they're all available right. in VOD. I know. I got to go home. And I can't. Dude, I seriously, I can't keep up. I watch yeah. all that VOD shit. I really yeah. do. Um, Pig, without spoiling it, all I will say is this is what I'll say about it. Pig is a it's a natural performance, a, 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 a performance that's rooted in realism. When we get so much, as we've already used this word once tonight, boombasticity from Cage, just like crazy, zany all over the place, so much range. And this is a somber, realistic um, performance. And he's so good in it. He, mm -hmm. I would say it's almost Oscar worthy. It's on the same level as Joe. Have you seen Joe? Uh, which Joe? There's two movies called Joe. Joe uh, is a Nicolas Cage film that he started in 2014. He's okay, like you mean the Nicolas Cage Joe? Uh, yeah. Yes, I have. I thought you meant the Peter Boyle Joe. No, no. Yeah, which is uh, and also an interesting movie. He he he's just he's just really great in Pig, and it's not you know everybody was expecting like uh like I, I won't say anything more. I'm not going to say anything more because that would actually yeah. I, it's on it. Hulu, I believe. It's uh, on Hulu. I Go need to Google watch. watch. It. I any just haven't film, had time. Any film that's put out by Neon, the label Neon, it automatically they have a distribution deal with Hulu, so you can always guarantee that a neon movie will wind up on Hulu for you to watch. I, I will say, you know, my tell me if this holds any work, because this has already been said to me about Pig. My yeah. friend, one of my best friends, he it's his favorite movie of the year. And he said, all he said to me was, it is the best representation of loss I've ever seen on screen. Um, I will like, say in a performance. It, since you're bringing up the word loss, there is. Yeah, I mean, there, oh, for sure there is. Um, I would say that, listen, I really respect Pig and the narrative and where the narrative goes and everything. Um, you know what? I really don't want to say anything more. Yeah, don't, don't, I, I can't. Yeah, I can't. Because yeah. I feel like anything that I say would, would affect or would affect the way that you watch it. And I don't want to like, I, you should go in blind. Just watch it. Watch it and take I'll it I'll watch in. that. You watch Deadfall. I'll tell you this. This is the yeah. one thing I'll tell you. You have to enjoy Pig for what it is. You know, I will. Yeah. Like that's yeah. what you have to because a lot of people like think they're getting one thing and then they get another and you just have to watch it and enjoy it for what it is. And with your with your expectations tempered, you will absolutely revel. I was reveling in it. I, I was I mean, reminding I'm not scenes. I, I have no expectations. I'm just ready to see a good movie. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah. You can make a recommendation, yeah. comrade. Go ahead, please. F feel free to make a recommendation. Um, we're going to honorable mentions now. It's your mm. turn. We're just doing one, right? Because I... one, because it just this uh, will just go on forever and ever. We've already name drop movies that we love, right? Like we've already said so, ones that uh, didn't make the list, but we love them. So that I have a right. I have a list, but I'm going to name one. All right, come on, you you can. I'm going to name right, one that you... hasn't been said. I'm going to pick the one that hasn't been said. Okay, which is Mom and Dad. Okay, okay, Mom and Dad. for performance. Okay, performance, it. performance. Yeah. Yeah, all of a zombie ass kicker. I, <laughs> uh, you know yeah. what? Uh, so it was. Uh, I actually uh know the guy who directed Malva Zombie Ass Isn't Kicker. Isn't that Chris Seaver? It's Chris Seaver, the great yeah. Chris Seaver. 
I I made like three or four of his DVD covers, and I did special effects on two of his movies. Okay, so, my friend has Chris Seaver tattooed on his hip. Really? Yes. Are you serious? That's amazing. One hundred percent serious. My friend Will Zydema has a tattoo of Chris's name on his hip. That's incredible. Yeah. So if <laughs> if you if you watched his movie The Weirdsies. I did the very oh. silly special effects in that movie like 10 years ago. Okay. I love I, the plot of the weird Z's. That's with like the kids who it's like necrophilia. It's like a Goonies. Stand by me. Stand by me. Goonies homage from Chris. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. want to see that one. Yeah. Um, but Chris is a great guy. I, I've known him for a while. Cool. Uh, yeah. Uh, it's all, like, but Maul the Zombie Ass Kicker was how I found out about him. I was, I was the first movie I saw, you know. He could do a feature film in a weekend, right? Something like that. Yeah, but uh, I'm. I'll just. I'll plug him. My him and my friend Clint Kelly started shooting his movies for him. So he, they kind of take a little bit longer, but they have looked a they little look bit better. Le- they look better. But I also appreciate the camcorder ones. You know. Yeah, I like yeah, the, yeah. the camcorder movies. Um. So for. Wait, what was the movie that you said? So I said Mom and Dad. Oh, Mom and Dad. I thought Misfit Shirt. That Misfit Shirt. I mean, not the Misfit Shirt. The uh, the he's wearing a Misfit Shirt. The pool table scene. The pool table scene. Right. Yeah. Also, I I mean, I think it's it's an interesting movie because it's directed by half of the Crank guys. Um, Love the Crank films. Love the Crank films. Love love them. Love them. You know how they um, shot those movies, right? Oh yeah, I know. Oh, uh, with, with on like, rollerblades, dude. On rollerblades with like Canon camcorders, like and, and they showed them in theaters. And, the, and that and those movies, the, the 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 camera work in those movies is astounding. It's, it's insane. So good. The editing is too. It's great. Um, they it, they really are. Like I wish they did the third one. It's and and yeah, Crank Two is one of the f- Crank One is a great action movie with a right. fresh with a fresh style. Crank Two is one of the funniest comedies ever. It's so, insanely funny. So crazy. Um. The one thing I want to say about Mom and Dad, which I always liked, was it was John Waters' favorite movie of that year, which that I makes think him happy. It's so it's such an odd. I remember reading his top ten, and he was like Mom and Dad. He's like, and to him, it was just the subversive nature of them trying to kill kids. Right. And I think that's what he loved about it, is Nick Cage trying to murder children. And it was like, <laughs> yeah, it was, and, and like, like it's pretty funny. Like people didn't expect that. That's like a right so hook. You know? There's a scene in there's a scene that I I shot it on. You know when. I have like this tradition when I watch a Nick Cage film and whenever there's like, there's like a crazy, some sort of crazy, like almost like surreal element. I have to shoot it with my cell phone. Like I have to like capture the scene to remember it. And for mom and dad, it's where he's sitting on the, he's sitting on the curb with his son talking about his car. And <laughs> There's this moment where he like he gets so carried away in in describing the car and he goes to take a drink of his of his uh, of his soda and he flicks his tongue. He does this tongue flick. It's just I can't I, I remember have to what watch he says it again, but oh, I'll I, I'll send it. you the video. I'll send, send you the, the video. video. I'll just he's watch like, the movie again. He's like he's like he's like let me tell you something, son. When my when I messed up my dad's car, I had to pay for it. I'd be like. Here's 10 bucks, dad. Here's 10 more bucks, dad. He's like, I got that car. Just premium cherry. And then he takes his drink and he goes like something like that. Like I can't describe it. He does this crazy thing. And I must have rewound that, that moment a hundred times. I just kept rewinding it. Cause it was like, it was just like, it, it, you just don't see actors do stuff like that. Like it's right. just, it, it just added so much to the role and only the only cage would do that right but here's the thing too like it's also a very cage moment because sometimes cage steps out of his role and we're getting cage and that was that was that moment but that's i, I live for those moments too so mom and dad great. that's my honor that's my honorable mention yeah. okay I, it was gonna be drive angry but you mentioned drive angry right? oh like, drive angry is yeah. It's such a batshit movie. I and think then, Drive Angry is his macho performance. Like his, be- yeah. his best macho performance. I mean, not only is he a macho, but he like literally tells a guy, this isn't a cage thing. This is a script thing. But he's like, I'm going to drink whiskey out of your he's skull. Tall. And then he does it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know, I almost put Valley Girl on my. On hey, my there you go. Valley Girl is notable for one scene. Because he's. Yes, it is shaved into a perfect triangle. I know exactly what you're talking about. And. 
you know, I didn't, but my favorite scene in Valley Girl is when they're driving to Hollywood and it's like Nick Cage being like, welcome to my world, where he's like, just knows everybody. And, and she's so impressed that he just like knows all this like cast of characters yeah. that are so like zany. He's like, hey man, what's up? Oh, like, it's like, we live on the other side of the tracks. You know, it's just like that kind of thing. It's like really, really funny. Was that uh, Rob Reiner? Did he direct Valley Girl? I don't know. But Valley Girl, the third act of Valley Girl sucks. I mean, it really like it just she ends up being like the worst person alive. She like dumps him for like yeah. the worst reasons. And then he tries to win her back. And it's like he no. has no self like self-worth. It's Martha just, Coolidge of uh, real ge- real genius fame. People people love that movie. It is it's a cult classic, and yeah. like I said, the first two acts are great. The third act just falls apart. I think I have good. to watch it again to have an opinion. Um, yeah, it's been a while. So, um, we so actually that- did talk zombie movies for three hours. Bob, myself, and Nate like talked about zombie movies. Oh, look up on God, this channel. Yeah. Look for the Sinful Celluloid podcast. My co-host uh, Chris. He was out of town, and so Bob and Nate came on, and we talked about zombie movies for three hours. We can't talk about zombie I, movies. I can, pl- I can. I actually, made, like 10 years ago, shot a zombie movie that's available on YouTube if you want to see it. Yeah. P- it's plug called, it. it plug it, it uh, comrade, if you want to see it. It's called My Boring Zombie Apocalypse. Directed, okay. directed for uh, it's a low budget movie directed by my friend Kevin Perkins, but it's like a kitchen sink movie. We had no clue what we were doing, but it's not boring and it's got a lot of funny stuff in it. So I, I'm a fab. I'm a big fan of Bob's, but this, is, of, that, this isn't my movie. Bob. This is Kevin's movie, but I like, I shot most of it. You know, we, right. we didn't know what we were doing. <laughs> you know okay. what I mean? Yeah. That's no part of filmmaking. That's yeah, no, but I think most people who have seen it said it's a fun watch. So cool. Cool. Yeah. There you go. Plug. Um, so for my honorable mention, I'm picking a direct to TV because there's so much. It's like a, it is it is such a part of Nick Cage's career that like you can't ignore it. And sometimes you you know, I guess it's kind of like when you go into like a shop and you're like when you watch Nicolas Cage direct direct to TV films, it's like it's like when you're going kitsch shopping, like yeah, you're when sh- you're shopping for you're chat- showing your age there, Jeff, by calling Sorry. direct to TV. No, it's fine. I'm just saying that's VOD, like we used to, I was yes. gonna say we used Birdie, to say it. Yeah. Birdie is a magnum performance from Cage. And uh Birdie. what's his face? Uh Matthew Matthew Modine is yeah. in that. Um but that's early. Joker. That's like 84. Holy crap. Yeah. Um but you get the VOD films that Nicolas Cage does are very much a part of his identity. And he's much been like slowing is, down on them though. Right. Like he hasn't been. No, doing no, no. Lately. He's still right? a dude. He's got, he's got like, he's got like five films coming out this year. I mean, they just really they just never stop. There's the, there's the one where he plays himself. There's another one. There's like a post-apocalyptic one that's coming out. I mean, it's just, it's Renfield, never ending. But, uh, it's right. It's Renfield butchers crossing the old way, the retirement plan. The unbearable weight of massive talent and untitled I mean, Nick Cage Amazon Studios project TV series. Okay, that's a lot of movies. <laughs> like for, come that's on. 2022, man. That's yeah, it's a lot. It's just 2022. Shit. He's just that's yeah. like he's just he's not he is just he's, out there. Per, he's the most prolific dude ever. He just keeps going. And I, I love didn't it. even see like half of the ones he put out in the last. Two I was years. let down by I was pseudo let down by Prisoners of Ghostland. It was okay. It needed to be crazier. I can't, yeah, I can't no. believe I'm saying well, that. Yeah, no. I can't believe I'm saying that. Well, there is a scene where his testicle explodes and That's then so he great. sort of does yeah. that crazy dance. Yeah. Um, she's gorgeous, by the way. That that uh the the girl, she's b- beautiful, beautiful girl. Yeah. Um so so the uh my as I was saying, VOD, I've seen them all, not all mm-hmm. of them, but I've seen a lot of them. And um, like when you're going shopping for tchotchkes. You're, you're always looking for something that's just like you want to turn to your friends and go, can you believe this is real? This exists. Mm-hmm. One of those films I've seen, like, you know, Running with the Devil. That's Lawrence Fishburne and Nicolas Cage. I've seen uh, uh, Kill Chain. I've seen 211. Uh, I, I've, just, I've seen a lot of them. Uh, one of the ones that probably takes the cake, probably the craziest, most batshit Nicolas Cage film I've ever seen. And I saw a film called Primal which was pretty popular when it came out. Like that was like a, one of the noteworthy. I, Nicolas Cage I didn't films. see that, but I remember the trailer. How could you forget that trailer? He, yeah. The trailer yeah. was insane. And it, Nicholas Cage, like he has like a sidekick who's a parrot 
and he has a blow. But I'm not spoiling anything because That's how fine. You, yeah. I mean, he has a blow dart gun. I didn't and he's hear shooting many good monkeys. Re- I didn't hear good mon- reviews for that movie. Really, he's shooting I- monkeys with a blow dart gun. Yeah. <laughs> like, I mean, it, it's just it's nuts. It's really <laughs> really nuts. Uh, it, it's great though, and um, those are the films that you watch and you go like, oh my god, like Nicholas Cage, like what the fuck is Nicholas Cage doing? Like it's just ridiculous. Yeah. And then he goes from doing that to doing Pig. So it's like, you know, but a score to settle might be. A score to settle. Yeah, it might be the film to end all films. I mean, this film. Dude, I haven't even heard of this movie. So a score I, to settle I gotta came watch out. It. A score to settle came out in 2020 or 2021. I can't remember. Uh, it is 2019. I okay, 2019. 2019. I I can't. I don't want to spoil too much, but this is why I love watching these films. There are always these idi- idiosyncr- idiosyncrasies in the scenes that Nicolas Cage is in. Mm -hmm. And you could tell that it's Nicolas Cage going to the director and making choices. He turns to the director and he goes, hey, since we're in this meat butcher shop, what if I'm chewing on a Slim Jim while I execute this guy? And it's this scene where Nick Cage is just eating meat sticks as he's about to execute this guy. And it's just like, like, that's the type of stuff like the gold that you find when you watch these films. Cause you just know that was like a Nick cage choice. Right. Um, there is a scene in this film where Nick cage is so, uh, and again, it's a perfect example of the, of the, of the, of, of cage sort of like unleashing his acting prowess and the director doesn't know how to wield it like a, like a honed weapon. Right. So it goes uncannily. Like, again, I don't blame the cage. I blame the director. There's a scene where he goes, beef? Beef? I'll tell you about beef. It. I can't. I. What I'm saying to you, I cannot. It does not do it justice. And you want to know the thing is, I was going to, like, spoil it. But then, like, I'm thinking in my head, if I show you this scene that maybe you'll actually invest the time to watch it because it's I'm so gonna, worth I'll, I'll watch it you don't have to tell me on it i never it's heard so of it your time. uh i love the fact that the poster is just his face <laughs> the poster for the movie I, is just his face like, i i so yeah. desperately want to tell you um the t- the 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 reveal or whatever but like no, don't just no, watch it yeah I, like it's one of those films that you should watch with other people but like you end up watching it by yourself because no one else is going to watch a movie like this and I don't know how I've never heard of it. That's what I can't believe. This I've heard is, of everything this else. This is like, I feel like I'm like a, a, a Magellan who's just out there yeah. in, in the cinematic ocean, constantly discovering Nick Cage islands. And that's what I do. Like, I just watch these. And you films. haven't seen Deadfall. <laughs> Come on, I've seen man. a sport of settle and I've never seen Deadfall. Can <laughs> you believe that? Crazy. That is so crazy. That's fine. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. Why don't you real quick, but as we wind, as we close up, without getting into super elaboration, uh, read off the rest of your honorable honorable mentions. They're all we'll stuff. There's anything. It's all stuff that we already said. So, Vampire's okay. Kiss. Yeah. Con Air, Drive yeah. Angry, The Weatherman, yeah. The Family yeah. Man. Yeah. Lord of War. Oh, nice. Lord of War, which we really Lord didn't of talk War about. is good. That's Lord a good of War one. is a solid movie. Yeah. And Bad Lieutenant. So. There you go. I feel like my honorable mentions list was almost the Jeff Frumis list. Isn't that interesting? Isn't yeah, that really interesting? interesting? Yeah, it's um, interesting. But we had a lot of overlap. This was a lot of fun. I really want to thank great. Bob. Uh, yeah. Check out check out his links to his YouTube channel and his Thunder Grunt podcast stuff is all in the description of this video. Um, Can I say one thing? Time. Oh, please, please, please. I want to say that it's a movie that's not available yet, but the movie you said that you were a part of that uh, we we made a movie in 2020. Yes, you were a part of it. Yes, I wanted to say that I saved it for this pod. Like the, one of the reasons I'm happy you went with this theme is because I was like, of all the performances in that movie, <laughs> it's a movie that has 20 it has uh, 25 different filmmakers showing. What they can do. I don't want to spoil it. And it's called The Transformations of the Transformations of the Doctors Jenkins. And Jeff made a segment for it. And out of all the segments, I got to say. Oh, stop. No, you're the Nick Cage <laughs> of that movie. What? You're, I mean, you're perform your your segment. The, what you're doing in that your is, segment is that is easily, such a compliment. I can't it, even tell no, you. but it is. I mean, like anyone that watches the movie eventually, which I know you'll promote when it's available. Of course. 
you are the Nick Cage performance of that movie. I, I have no I have no qualm in saying that because it is true. Okay, I'm putting that as a superlative on my website. Okay, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> Bob Rose. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. You, uh, uh, I'm sure the other directors would agree with me. You know what's funny? I am an actor. I'm what I like to call an actor by necessity. Yeah, I love... Same. I love to act, but I don't know how to memorize dialogue. And same. same. <laughs> I, you know, I just do when, when I was doing the 72 hour thing, it was like yeah. a pathetic, like, oh, I had to memorize the sentence and instantly say it before I yeah. got it. it it's I a real talent. It. It's a talent. It's a talent. I would have been, yeah. I would, I absolutely would have been an actor if I could have memorized dialogue and I can't. Right. Mm -hmm. But I've I've acted in so much stuff. I am an actor. I am I am totally an actor. As much as well, you yeah. are an actor, I'm an actor too. But um I got nominated always... for best actor twice this year. <laughs> you did, you did. I mean, it's always it's always out of necessity. Oh, we yes. need to fill in that slot, or oh, I want to do a little cameo, or oh, you know, it's never yeah, like it's never because I think I'm an actor and I can act like as the leading man. Although I will tell you, it's so nice to you, you, you the the positive thing about acting in your own stuff is you could rely on yourself to do it like yeah you know that you are going to show up you know that you don't need to feed yourself you know that you don't need to pay yourself <laughs> it's the cheapest like, way to do it it's yeah. it's just really it's just it's really really nice so like when i think about like directors like jeremy gardner who who wrote directed and starred in the battery and i just go like yeah. Like why? Like, of course you would. Of course you would do something. That's not vain. That's like out of necessity. And right. he's great in that movie. He's really great. I don't know if you've seen the battery, but you I should. Have not. If you have not. I'm just Ugh. agreeing because I know that you're not. You wouldn't bullshit me. I will say one last thing I will say. I will plug the battery right here. It was. And I listen, a, a movie's budget should not be its personality. I hate that so much. There, Conrad agrees with me. Here, here we go. We're talking about zombie movies. All the right, Conrad, ask your question real quick, Conrad. Go for um, it. it. It's it was made for six thousand dollars, and the you know the sound guy was uh, was the sound guy for how Romeo's Distress. How much did well, I was going to say? How much did your debacle movie cost? It cost zero dollars. You made a feature for zero dollars, yeah, starring but, yourself. <laughs> <laughs> but no, but what's great about the battery is that it's like like you know what was crazy about the battery like. The battery came out in 2012 at the same year that the Avengers did. And I don't rem I'm not sure if it was at the red box kiosk. I think it was. And it was next to the Avengers film. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so it's like this, this, this hundred million dollar film was right next to a $6,000 film. And that $6,000 film has just as much heart and character as it just it really goes to show how the technology has leveled the playing field. If you have a really good story, well, you can tell Romeo's I distress mean, look good too. So if he shot that, then I have faith in battery. I did. I did shoot Romeo's distress. And the reason why I shot Romeo's distress is because I watched the battery. I watched the battery. And that was the thing that finally pushed me to make my own feature length film because awesome. which you can watch on this channel, by the way, in its uncut form and with commentary, um, right? And with the commentary as well, if you want, I finally, and you know what? I got to watch the commentary. I haven't the, yet. <laughs> the sad thing about Romeo's distress is that I have made more money on Romeo's distress on YouTube than I have. That's not true. When I had a distributor, I did make more money, but it's just amazing how it's amazing how you can make money on YouTube sure. with your movies. Like yeah. you can, I made more money with Romeo's distress on YouTube than I did on Amazon prime. How about that? So Kind of, that's depressing, but also good. I guess that YouTube is it free. Just, it so. shows how the the technology yeah. has changed. If you can, if if you if you can earn, and you know what the worst part is right now, what I, where where I feel stuck is that like it's like you can be in a in sort of like a purgatory where you're making too little money to stop what you're doing, but you're not making enough money to be pro and go full time. Yeah, it is a terrible purgatory to be in because you can't stop because you're making money but you're not just not making the amount of money that you need to sustain yourself and yeah. it's just really that's tough i admire you, know, you were talking about your numbers earlier too i admire what you do on this channel i have my own podcast i don't grind like jeff to everyone watching i do not grind like jeff does jeff is 
Dude, you, I mean, you can talk better and more than most human beings on this planet. So that's also a high. I've gotten yeah. so many. Yeah, th these these comments from Bob are better than any uh, winning any award. These are these are the oh, true merits of validation. So come thank on. you, thank yeah. you. Um, yeah. All right, let's end this thing before yeah. we. Well, I, I I've literally done. Uh, I, Did you have a question? So Did you have hours. a question? Yeah. What, what was the question, dude? What was the question? Fucking make money, George. Fuck, I forgot my question. Come on, comrade. <laughs> comrade, what's going on? <laughs> I thought he had like a the missus didn't either. Okay. I don't know, man. I don't know. Hey, Luke, I'm so glad you enjoyed yourself. Thank you so much for Thank joining us. Thank you for us. watching, man. We go live or, all whoever, yeah. I, mean, I go live all the time. Sometimes Bob's here, you know, too. I have a cast of characters that that comes through and, and talks with me. And when I don't have someone to talk to, I talk to you guys as well. So it's it's just really, really nice. Um, but yeah. let's okay. Uh, listen, Bob, I'm not going to hold on to you. I'm going to say goodbye now because I'm going to play out. I'm going to play out with my Patreon thing. So okay. everybody, say goodbye to Bob. Thank you so much. Out see of everybody here. later. We'll, we'll think of another top ten to do when, when the with the right actor that comes along. So I'm down. Right. Just let me know. All right, get out of here, Bob. And I'll see you next year, Bob. Happy New Year. Ba 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 Please take my hand. Do you know about Patreon? I got a Patreon on this page, and I think you should join it. Bob, 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 Baran. Peace and hair grease to Bob, Baran. Make sure you watch the Patreon video, Bob, Baran. Bob, 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 Baran. I'm going to play the Patreon video right now, Bob, Baran. Bob, Bob. Hey guys, what's going on? It's Jeff. So I've decided to make a Patreon. What is Patreon? I don't know how to define a Patreon. Let me look it up. Patreon is a membership platform that makes it very easy for creators to get paid for the things that they're already creating. I want to do it full time. I want this to be my full time job. In my efforts to make that happen, I've set up this platform. Is it going to work? Is it going to be successful? I don't know. But I would rather try and crash and burn than not try at all. The goal is to create enough passive revenue so that I can continue to do this full time, uninterrupted. Why? Because I love to do this. I love creating content. I love making videos. I love shooting films. I love doing podcasts. In case you couldn't tell, I love to talk and I never shut the fuck up. <laughs> so right now I've kept the Patreon incredibly simple. There's two tiers and that may change in the future. The Murdergram is a simple way to extend support for all of the hours and hours of free content on the channel for nothing more than a dollar. 38 cents goes to Patreon. What's a buck 38, eh? It's less than a cup of coffee. But it's a great way that you can show support for very little effort. When you divide that dollar 38 by the hours and hours and hours of time spent listening to this endless drivel of content, the dollar cost average works out. Next up is the YouTube casualty for six dollars and 66 cents. <laughs> The YouTube casualty is loaded to the gills. Enjoy the archive ad-free as well as ad-free early access to special docu-style podcast videos, music reaction commentaries, and the like a month before they drop on YouTube, loaded with ads, I might add. You're also going to get exclusive content and behind-the-scenes content that is not available on YouTube or anywhere else. So you get to peek behind the veil. And believe me, there's a couple of choice pieces. Most of all, more than anything, whether you join the Patreon or not, I just want to thank each and every one of you that comes to the channel, that watches all the shows, that leaves comments, that participates, that subscribes. That's really the most important thing. This is just trying to find a way to earn a living as an artist. And with that, thank you for my TED Talk. Join the Patreon, because we need you! 66 cents.